I believe that a lot of this, the difficulty we are now in, is because the people opposite don't understand that this is not just some little negotiation of going towards a resolution where we tweak a plan. I read this before, but I'll do it again. We've had a five-year process, 48 public meetings attended by 1,900 people, six formal meetings in, in Coquitlam Council, with Coquitlam Council or your committees, four extended meetings for public sessions. The vice chair of the regional planning committee is the mayor of Coquitlam. The person in charge of the staff group coming up with the final draft is one of the key planners in Coquitlam. There's been countless staff meetings, there's been countless discussions. The people opposite have to realize how little scope there is to accommodate at this point. It's not a lack of desire. If we could just simply throw down the rules and agree on anything, that would be just fine. We could probably solve this quickly. But you can't. You can't. Whatever happens here, uh, if, the, if there is a change to the regional growth strategy proposed, you stand to unwind the whole process. And that's the kind of situation we're in after all this work and collaboration. So I just, I think that we're best served by people who talk about goodwill. Uh, looking in the mirror, and those who talk about a lack of goodwill are people who are not, who are not committed. I think they need to take a deep reflection. Okay, this is gonna, it's gonna keep going for a while, and, and I think there's two or three comments. Um, I know, Mayor Stewart, that you indicated, I don't know if you wanna take turns between the two of you. I'll defer to Mayor, to Councilor Reed. Okay. And can I ask something? And I, again, if I'm going against tradition, which I know I am, I might get put in my place. Are first names okay here or not? Sure. I'd, I'd be a little more if that does if that's okay with everybody. I'd, I'd prefer to address people by the first names, unless anybody objects. So thank you for that. I think it's over to you then. Well, I feel at home here. I like this place. I work in this place. I, I hope that we can look at this as a bunch of colleagues sitting around the table trying to solve some issue. I do not think, and it was one of the things that we took into consideration when we looked at some of the objections that we had, and they aren't Coquitlam objections. Metro's been very generous with us, as we have with every other city, of all our little objections. Mine are fundamental to the agreement, and the ones that I want to make, I, the ones that I feel should be made, but then me. I don't feel like frivolous, and I don't think that they would change the whole document, nor do I think this is the un unraveling of a document. I believe, I do not believe that it has to go back to public hearings and all that if that's where you're going. I just don't. I think there are things, and when you say tweak, maybe that's my word, but I don't think. We have three million dollars worth of lawyers in this room. I, I really think that they can sit down and they can do all the wordsmithing and the point A, point B, paragraph nine, word five. What we're here for, we elected officials, is to sit down and try and come up with something that we can say, can we acknowledge some of this? Can we acknowledge that maybe this should be on the table and can we acknowledge a really easy way of getting out of it or maybe a difficult way or maybe that could be done at a later time in the process? That's what I'm here for today, is to acknowledge that I feel there are some fundamental problems with the original agreement, and that's what I'd like to get out. I don't think that there's as much animosity in the room as some people think there should be, or there is. Um, I've known most of you for 25 years. Um, we haven't changed. We're all just as cute as we were 25 years ago. And I would just like to continue this in a very open and easy, Discussion. Thanks, and I know Richard's got something to say, and I also do want to encourage people at some point we're going to have to come to terms with the agenda. Um, and this this introductory uh, interaction is, I hope, hope leading in a more positive, good, willing direction. 
which might pave the way for an agreement on the agenda and then to begin to pick up where you left off last meeting, but I'm not going to curtail this by any means until people feel that they're ready to, to move on to that procedural item and see if there's an agreement. Thank you. Um, fundamental to this process is whether we think it can work. And now I, I may be now finally understanding why it was that 10 weeks ago, Metro Vancouver took the position that there is no chance to resolve this. I thought it was because they didn't understand our position, our concerns, and I heard that repeated to me by a number of people. We have no idea what your, what your concerns are, and even though they're quite well spelled out in several letters to Coquitlam by Metro, reiterating what our concerns are, and uh, concerns that aren't, haven't been addressed yet, concerns that there are still concerns. They haven't been accommodated in any way. They haven't been managed. They, those concerns still remain, but they are the fundamental concerns that uh, my colleagues have referred to and that I referred to at the last meeting. The concerns that are parochial, the concerns that only affect Coquitlam, the concerns that only affect Fort Moody, the concerns that only affect North Van or wherever, they've already been resolved in every community. And it was mentioned at the last meeting that we have, Metro has accommodated everybody. They've done everything to make sure that everybody's parochial concerns were accommodated in their community. So those concerns evaporate. In the course of that, of course, it meant we got further and further away from a document that was particularly consistent, and that actually is one of the concerns we identified a long time ago, but that's beside the point. The, what we have today is some concerns that weren't parochial, some concerns that weren't local, that were regional. Coquitlam took a different perspective when we analyzed this. We also considered whether it would work, whether it would work across the region. And I hate to do this all over again, but um, if no one can go back and look at the webcast because it didn't get webcast. So I'll make those very quick points again that these concerns that we have today, the ones that there is little room to accommodate apparently, um, are regional. They are concerns that affect everybody in the region and whether or not this will work and whether or not it will work five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, whether or not it will achieve the kinds of things that individual members in the back row there are hoping that it will achieve. Because I know that each one of you has some passion about regional planning, about making this plan work. So we've got some issues and, and we've heard from many of you that you have similar issues and that, that individuals have agreed with certain, certain of our issues and perhaps don't understand other issues yet or don't agree with them and that's fine too. But a comment that, I, and I want to get to the, the point that we're actually debating right now, which is why, did, why is there a resignation from this process? Why is someone who was partnered, who was going to be a dual chair, why did someone say, well, it's not working because the role of the chair isn't that role anymore? And, well, I'll get to there in a moment because uh, Malcolm made, made a comment that we have to come to agree this side of the table has to figure out how little room there is, how little they're willing to move, how, how little room there is to accommodate the very significant concerns that Coquitlam has. And, um, and I'm pondering this because I'm, I'm wondering why, if there's little room to accommodate, does the legislation set out a process to figure out how to work through those, process, those issues? The legislation actually says, um, if the local government refuses to accept the proposed regional growth strategy, you notify the minister there's a process set up and the process will be set up um, unless, and the, and the legislation actually says, if the regional government, or for that matter the local government, thinks there's no chance of resolving this, it should go to arbitration. What I gather it now means is that the local, the region felt there was, that they weren't willing to accommodate anything. Even though at the time, apparently, they didn't know what our issues were. Why does the legislation set out a process to resolve this? And actually, it sets out a, a whole bunch of detail. And so we're looking at the role of the chair, and I want to bring it all back to that because that's where we're at this morning, and that's the deep concern I got yesterday. And um, we were all very much concerned with the, uh, the <coughs> hooliganism that was going on in Vancouver. We were also trying to work through an important meeting that we were going to have today. The role of the chair, and it's specified in this, and it was repeated to us earlier, and I recognize that one of the lines, pointing out details in proposals or legislation that are being misunderstood or misconstrued. And, and I want to know whether that's one of the rules of the chair. 
because I know that it was, you know, Gordon made a comment, and I can't remember the exact words. I, uh, I'm going to say this over and over again because I often go back to our webcast and review individual portions of meetings so that I know what was said. Um, uh, Metro Vancouver objected to the webcast. It meant, so, it meant though, that none of the regions all the regions, communities, all of the elected officials in the region now have to be in the room if they want to know what happened, because they can't go back and refer to that. Um, but I, we're not going to revisit that. But he made a comment about, he tried to explain the one element of the legislation, and just say what it, what it actually meant. And, um, and that interjection, that offering of a bit of relevant information that might help us move forward, was denounced, was rejected, was was told that's not your role. Your role is to point out who's the next speaker. And I think we could have done that with a system of buttons. And so uh, I, I can't imagine that that was what's envisioned. That's not what's envisioned in the legislation. It's not what in, was envisioned by the ministry and the minister. And so I, want, I need to know. We've got a one of our neutral third party, one of our Facilitators has said this can't he can't help here because and I understand why he said it and I want to know whether that's fixable or whether it is possible that this process cannot be facilitated because to me that's absolutely vital either this process can be facilitated or else it can't and if it can't be facilitated then the legislation then one of us is saying the legislation needs to be ignored. I, I need to know what we're trying to do here. Um, I, I need to know what the implications of Gordon's withdrawal, with Gordon's resignation is. Uh, and, I, and I need to know, as Lena said, whether both of us are committed to this, because we are committed to this. And I recognize that Metro Vancouver has gone through 10 years and they've been very committed to getting an RGS. I understand that. I need to know now whether we're committed to resolving this or simply committed to ramming through an RGS, flawed as it is, or imperfect as it is, or imperfect as it might be. It may well be that you're taking the position that it is perfect, it cannot be improved, and therefore there's no reason to accommodate it because it can't be improved. Um, and I know that many around the table would disagree because I know that I've spoken to a bunch of you and you've said, well, yeah, we can probably get better than that. I'm hoping that the region will benefit from our deliberations, but right now I, I, I've got my concerns. I think Johnny wanted to say something, and I'll say something about facilitation without, without weighing in on what, what it means or doesn't mean. The F word means a, a number of different things to different people. Uh, the root of the word is to make easy, facile, to make easier the discussions about others, to provide procedural and communication help. It is not negotiation, because negotiation means you're a party. Now, those of us who've done this work, and I've been on it for 15 years, uh, Gord 28, uh, have views and identities about how we perform our role. Now, sometimes those views um, are the bulk of our experiences. Those views are consistent with the expectations of people who hire us. Your process agreement does talk about a facilitator. It talks about ensuring that the meetings of the participating parties are effective, productive, and orderly, which I think is more of a chairing function. But then you add on the focus on resolution. That's the point at which the facilitative side of us says, well, they want orderliness, they want to keep track of what's going on, have some sum up. Um, take notes, report outcomes, but they want to resolve something. So the facilitator is also some, at least we read, and our work has always been to help with the resolution side, which means the negotiation gets assisted, made easier. So that was the spirit in which we were uh, trying to suggest our help, and the memo uh, went in that direction. And I appreciate very much that there's not consensus on what a facilitator in this role uh, should be doing. And I don't want to suggest that there's a rightness and a wrongness there. But I think it's brought up questions, is there volition to really resolve? And if so, and there's a facilitator doing something in there, what really is their role? What, where does it start and end? And if you want, I did, sorry, I did suggest yesterday that if there's legislative confusion, we can get the province on the phone. They will, they will provide an outside, I'm not an expert in the act, and I don't want to be. Um, I wanted to point of clarification, and, and maybe, maybe for some too far, maybe for some, that's great. But unless you're of one mind about how I can be helpful or not and accept that assistance, uh, then I think it, it brings into question, is there a real negotiation to be had here? 
Uh, and there's, there is real frustration here, but I think Maya said there's also some goodwill, and, and let's see if we can build on that. So I don't know where you want to go. I really don't. I, I showed up because I wanted to be as helpful as I could. I started with you early-ish on and wanted to see if there was some way to uh, resurrect uh, the negotiation process. That's why I'm here. <laughs> so where, where do you go from here? And I know we're, we're 40 minutes into this meeting. Legislation said this the, the chair taking sides. I don't know 
know what he was going to say, but he might have agreed with Jim, or he might have um, agreed with me on what the legislation said, but then he's going to, then he's going to take his sides. So I think, uh, and I didn't make the objection, but, but I, I think there is, a, there is a grounds for suggesting to facilitate in those kind of situations. You know, kind of, your job is to facilitate the discussion on what the legislation said and, may, you know, and, and not, not uh, actually offer opinions on what is or is not the legislation. I think that was the, the spirit of that interaction. I don't think it was inappropriate. So I personally I think if we can actually go on with this stuff, worry too much about how we get on with this stuff at this point. It just simply allows <coughs> to carry on with what we're doing yesterday. I know that both Mike and Nancy have something to say, and I, I don't know where you were you left agenda setting. I, mean, I think there was a fairly good idea that there's going to be completion of clarifying questions, um, participating um, affected local governments have a chance to chime in with clarifying questions. As a result of that, there could be a response, and that hopefully uh, provides some fertile ground for some potential negotiation or problem solving, whether it's tweaking or changing, I don't know. Um, so how that gets worded and if there's an agreement that that's a, at least a way to, to, to try to make efforts to see if you can get anywhere in the next few hours or not. Soon enough, we'll probably want to come to some conclusion about that. But perhaps before doing that, we'll certainly let May and then Celine speak to, to this issue. And we're sort of all over the map a bit, but it's all speaking. You know, we're maybe a bit of a catalyst for some of this, but uh, here we are. Well, I found yesterday was all over the map a bit. Um, well, I was in the yesterday. It wasn't yesterday. Well, it was the child was last night. Okay. I thought Tuesday was all over the map that we had our, uh, we put our objections out and probably now, in hindsight, very foolishly decided to try and put what we thought might be acceptable solutions, or at least solutions out, so that we, we came forward with something that we could grab onto and say, well, this is the dumbest idea I ever heard ever. This may have some merit. And what I heard was we jumped from this one to this one to this one, uh, wordsmithing and um, trying to look at the solutions more than the objections. And I really would like to be able today to put objections on the table and discuss whether they have merit, whether they can be acknowledged by both sides as true and worthy objections and worthy of good discussion. And that didn't happen yesterday, or Tuesday. And, and I, I find that frustrating. And the only question I have about the agenda, I, I'm disappointed because I thought we had the gentlemen that were here, the two of them, that they were going to put the agenda forward. And I'd like to know, actually, I, I could have been a fly on the wall in your office if all of a sudden we had to change the agenda that went from four pages down to one and a third. I think probably you would have been sitting just where we are today, going, what in the heck are they doing? And more importantly, why are they doing this? So I can see there's merit on both sides here. Um, and that's what I have to say about this. OK, and then, Selena, I'll just say one thing. The memo is embedded in the agenda, but it's a separate document. It was, ju And if people want to reject it, it's a waste of time. These guys didn't know what they were talking about and went beyond their jurisdiction. That, that can be part. We thought it would be a stimulating, catalytic thing for, for problem-solving efforts. Maybe it, it is for some, not for others. The agenda itself, in terms of the flow of today, uh, there's, there's been some tweaking of that. There's been some, some wording changes that I think people want to get resolved. Um, maybe it's just resolvable just out loud saying, here's how things are going to go. Um, but I think soon enough, you probably want to get to that to see if you can begin to tuck into the questioning that you finished off with last week. But Selena. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate Johnny's comments. I, I found them very valuable and very helpful. So thank you very much for sharing that perspective. And uh, my apologies to Malcolm if, it, uh, if there was any <coughs> offense taken about not being at the table. The truth is you are here. Um, at times, it, it's, it's hard. And I think it's hard for you as well. So um, um, we need to acknowledge that. Um, I would actually like to start moving forward. I'm aware of the time. There's a lot of people here. Um, and so I'd like to start to start us at least moving forward. I appreciate that there's still other questions that Metro Vancouver has uh, for, for uh, Coquitlam on um, our suggestions and our, 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 our concerns. But I also want to make sure that we have some time to hear from some of the other communities. I think it's for us. 
it would be really helpful to, uh, and I'm just going to ask if it would be possible to just have some sort of time commitments that, and I appreciate that, that, that Metro Van uh, has lots of questions for us and that if we can't get to them that maybe we can get them in writing so we could take a look at them just as we've given you our stuff in writing and have had some, you know, so that you had some time to take a look at them. Um, but I really want to make sure if we can, if we can get some agreement, to make sure that some of the other communities have an opportunity you know, to the, the, some of the other voices we can hear from, from those. I think it's really important to at least, for us to hear that today, and can we get that agreement, um, you know, on the table to, I, 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 I'm open to suggestions, but I want to make sure that we have time for that. Yeah, that's inherent in what we're doing here. Great. Try to get there. Okay. Jim, I think we're going to get there real soon in terms of question asking and answering. I know some people are raring to go. Um, Jim? <clears throat> Yes, thanks, Jamie. Um, just following up on Councillor Robinson's remarks, if, if I can suggest as the faithful bureaucrat trying to keep things rolling ahead and, and, and taking Johnny's lead, let's start with the agenda you prepared. The last two bullet points I think were the main things of contention. If we can just take those to mean what Johnny said at the end of his commentary about, let's get to a point where we can start going back and forth and let's look at the proposals. Do they have merit? Do they need some tweaking? What? No. Let's try to move this thing onwards. So, if I could recommend, Good. let's turn to the agenda and if we can get to work. start without a warning. Great. Okay. So, we'll get through that. And I think, uh, as Selena was saying, the importance is to allow some time for other participating affected local governments to have an opportunity to ask questions as well. Those of you on the outer edges here, affected local governments and some staff, you know you have to activate your mics by pressing. Uh, uh, everybody else beyond that, mics don't work. So if you have anything to say, and I'm not sure anybody would, because I think we, I will read it one more time, that I think everybody appreciates all local governments are affected, of the, all 24. H however, some are participating, meaning they have a role to ask questions uh, and seek clarification, not to r raise new objections or, or, or other things. I should also point out that a formal submission was provided from Burnaby, uh, that, that just came about all of a sudden, so I haven't even read it, but I think it has to be acknowledged that it was provided. Um, and uh, so I, I don't know more than that, but I think it's important that, that gets acknowledged and everybody does know about it. But I think, again, um, there are observers who don't have a role to speak. They're here to look and listen. There are those who are participating affected local governments that ask questions. Uh, but these are the parties that are looking to resolve to the extent that's doable. Uh, and if that consensus is reached, I just have to say this because it was uh, an affected local government asked, put the question to me. If, if there's an agreement made here or the, the building blocks of that agreement, what role do others have in that? Do they vote? Do they get involved? Do they chime in? And my answer is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is very much the consensus if it's reached is among you as two parties. Now, that consensus obviously would have to be ratified by boards and councils, and then that would go out to all affected local governments, and they would have a 60-day period in which to comment. But they're not voting on this in this room or any of that sort of thing. So I hope that's, that's clear, and if people want more clarification, um, and, and that's too vague, then the province can be uh, encouraged to answer that, that question. But I had to raise that because it was brought to my attention. So, um, should we simply take, pick up where you left off in terms of question asking, clarifying, and ensure time for other um, communities to, to chime in with questions once Metro Vancouver has, has finished? And hopefully there's enough time for all of that. So, Malcolm, would you like to? Uh, very quick. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Richard? Um, Burnaby's. Does everyone have Burnaby's? Yes. We don't. <coughs> Does any, everyone other than us have Burnaby's then, I guess is the question. Mm -hmm. I have copies to give to staff to pass to everybody, so I'm okay. hoping that you have Well, I don't yeah, have it. We, we, none of us have it. So. We don't have okay. it. Um, I've got mine. But okay, there's, there's, can somebody, I mean, I think it, can somebody make, make a copy? <laughs> I, okay. Thank, thank you. Is um, there more, is there copies other than Burnaby's? Uh, um, no, because I have nothing. Again, I... Do we, I don't, I, I confess to having, not having read it, but it's not really my business to get too into the content. Do people want to wait until everybody's got a copy of that in their hands or just proceed with questions? I don't know how, it, how much it affects the question and answering. I, I think you should move ahead. You should let it get out I of order. Th I think. I mean, just go. Just go. Yeah. Burnaby can make questions. their comments. Yeah. 
Okay, so we appreciate that, that submission and it will be copied for everybody who doesn't have, have that. And I should also point out there's regional growth strategy booklets for anybody who doesn't have them towards the back. Um, but let's get back to this and I think perhaps I, if I can turn it over to you, uh, Malcolm, I don't know if you've got, you want to pick up from where you left off last time. Yeah, one of the difficulties I have, of course, is remembering exactly what I asked before, but I'm going to try not to... Uh... <laughs> we'll let you know. No, no, you won't, actually. Um, so, no, you won't. Thank you. Uh, but for proposal number one, where we're talking about changing that urban de uh, designation and this veto system, I think we talked about uh, how this could possibly, if, if we adopt this, how it could be a regional plan at all when, when parties are able to so easily uh, change things around. Um, and also, we've talked about the changing of the uh, the threshold to a one-third vote instead of needing a needing a 50 percent or more vote to to do anything. Uh, so I think I'll I'll go on to number two. Um, number two, let's refresh ourselves. This is the uh, the strategy. Proposal number two talks about, in addition to the review under the Local Government Act where there may be a review every five years after hearing from all the various parties. Perfect. Then we have um, uh, this other, this second procedure. Um, given the complexities of this, do you think that a one-year period of time is enough uh, to go through the various uh, changes that need to be made? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question because we wrestled with how long that time period ought to be. I mean, clearly it should be long enough to allow for um, a fruitful discussion of, of an issue that might have been raised. Um, uh, this was, of course, prepared outside of the context of the experience we've had so far in this dispute resolution process, and it might be that um, given our experience now, we would suggest that um, a longer process might be in order, but uh, that certainly is something that I think the parties could come to some discussion about, because I, I would suggest that there's no point entering in, into that unless there's a, a, a an ability to um, come to some accommodation of the of the issue, so that the uh, those local governments that have raised the question um, uh, can can find fruition of their uh, or can re reach a conclusion that meets everyone's needs. Uh, sorry? Do you want to add something? Uh, I know May wanted to say something, well, so I don't know if it's adding on to no, that before I, Malcolm I responds. To, this, this is the issue that I'm most concerned with, but do you want to me to do this later or just go I, I, Whatever you wish. Um, I would encourage you to go uh, you know, proposal by proposal, objection by objection, see where you can. And I think what you're asking is, is there, is there an appetite to look at this whole question of ways to trigger the consideration of a review? And if so, okay, maybe there's plenty of opportunity to see how long how long could be given to doing something like that, if there's an appetite to uh, tackle that, the bigger question. The smaller details is how long and how, and those are the details. But there's a, there's a bigger concept at work here, I think. Okay, so that's my problem. Go ahead. So okay. May, do you want to, yeah. Thank you. If I may, the, you know, this document is going to be in place for a long time, and um, any fundamental changes will be a type one amendment under the LGA, which re will require each and every municipality to agree. Now, I know we've had lots of conversation that there should be a true sunset clause, whereby the RGS automatically terminates in five years or so. To me, that's not practical. But if all municipalities are pleased with the workings and by monitoring it and looking at it, and we all say, yeah, this works, um, then they could just, we could just readopt it if you had a true sunset clause. But if not, then we'd have to start all, all over again. Nobody wants to do that. The problem with it, too, is that it would probably require, again, 100%, and you might find that there's another Coquitlam out there, and we'd be back where we are today. My problem with this is that under Section 869-2, God, I hate these things, of the Local Government Act, it doesn't adequately address these concerns because it only requires Metro to consider a review every five years and does not guarantee that one will occur. And my problem with that is, is if I were going to sign this document, which you're asking me to, I'm going, what's the term? 30 years. Well, 
Is there a trigger in there? Is there a kit clause that every five years I can look and say, gee, I'm really liking this, or maybe we could expand this or decrease this or whatever? It isn't there. It isn't there for each and every municipality. The only person that can trigger this is Metro. And I thought maybe I was right, and then I thought maybe I was wrong, and I went back and forth, and I've checked it out with our staff. Um, I've had legal advice. It's true. It, it's true. There is no one other than Metro that can truly bring this up and trigger it. And that is one of my biggest problems with this whole thing. So what sort of agreements are so one-sided that only one side can review the whole document? And I have a problem with that. And I'd like us here today to acknowledge that that is a true problem. How we solve it? Wow, that's up for debate and discussion. But I think that each and every municipality, we're collective, we're a group of municipalities and cities going together on one side and we're forming a business opportunity for all of us with Metro Vancouver, but Metro shouldn't be the only one that can trigger a review. Well, let's And that's at where that. I have the problem. 869 sub 2, at least once every five years, a regional district that has adopted an RGS must consider whether the RGS m must be reviewed for possible amendment. Yes. So it has to be done. It's not a discretionary matter. <laughs> it has to be done. That and only Metro can trigger it, though. Well, it, but it still has city. to be done. What has to be done? Yeah. Sorry. They have to have the review. Well, uh, that's just not they quite have to consider that's whether correct. to have a review. That's it. Right. And so the, the threshold for having that review, after hearing from all these parties, they must provide, for, for these purposes, the regional district must provide an opportunity for input on the need for the review to the persons, organizations, the third authorities referred to in that other section. So they have to go around to other groups to ask them. Uh, about it and get their input on the need to review. So, Metro Vancouver has the has has a process. They they bring it to the board. They say, do we need a review or not? Yes or no. Fifty percent plus one, I suppose. Weighted vote says yes. Then there's going to be a review. If, I, I if, believe it's may consider a review. But could I pass no, that no, to our staff? No, it's staff? right here. I'm, it's must. And if you want the must, to, yeah, okay. must. Consider, 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 not do, not, not conduct. No. Consider. Yeah, it, right. So the motion yeah. comes to the board. That's right. Yeah. And the motion is that there be a review. And if that's supported by 50% plus one, then there's going to be a review. Okay. Can I stop you there? What if I want to have a review and the whole northeast sector or the whole south sector? What if they want to have a review? But, What's the process for that? No. Just a minute. What you're getting to, and I'll put this in the form of a question, if 40% want to review, yeah. if 40% want to review, the, the process under the uh, Local Government Act fails. But in fact, under this proposal, number two, it would pass. And there would have to be this it, it has to be ratified by one third of the members. So if you had 40%, it would then go into this process, right? That's our process. Right. Yes. Well, my point there is all you're really doing is number one, setting up a second process, number two, or a second vote, as it were, and secondly, you're lowering the threshold. Is that what you wanted? Is that the real point? that you really want 869 sub 2 to say at least once every 50, uh, at least once every five years on a vote of 33%, a regional district uh, must consider whether to amend the regional growth strategy. Is that the point? Tr trying to be nasty, not nasty about this, but to bring up yesterday, I remember Richard talking about a million people, so I sat up last night and tried to add them all up. We're not quite at a million, but it really does disenfranchise a lot of people in a lot of little cities around the region. They may have something that they want to bring up and they don't quite reach that threshold. So I, I guess, Malcolm, if I'm gonna go into an agreement and we're all gonna be signatories to the agreement, I think anyone in, that's a signatory to this agreement should have the right to say, I would like to review this. Okay. That's, that's, my, that's my point, that's my objection. How we solve it, I think, is, is for... And my point is you're setting up a second process to do the same thing with a lower threshold. 
Okay. And, and I don't think that that's the way to go for a number of reasons. But secondly, if you go through this process and you've talked about the type one amendments that you get at the end of this process, what if it's not accepted by all the cities that are involved? How, how do you get around that? That's the solution that we talk about. This is my objection. This is where I want to go today. <clears throat> I, where I want, where I see this process where we can move on is if we can at least look at our objections and say, okay, they have merit or they don't have merit. If they don't have merit, well, we agree to disagree. Uh, if there's some merit in this, is there something we can look at? Is there well, something we, we can... Have, you know, we have to discuss amongst ourselves whether, we whether a lower threshold is a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and I personally I agree with that. don't think it's a good idea. I think that's what democracy says to us, but we can decide that. But my further question is, if you come to the end of this process, uh, and it could be after, I think, a dispute resolution, and an arbitrator says, okay, this is going to be the change, and I agree that it should be changed in that way, and it's to be changed in accordance with section 6.3, how do you can, can the arbitrator then overrule all affected local governments, or do you have to concede to all local governments? I don't know the answer to that. Well, uh, and what I'm saying is, this may give you the right to object on a lower threshold. I'm not sure that it gets you to the result that you want, because just by, by having an arbitrator at the end of this dispute process agree with you doesn't mean if it's going to be done in accordance with Section 6.3, you still got this hurdle to go over with all the cities. And but what, we don't actually. What I want is a fair process. I want a fair process that every city that's a signatory to this agreement has the opportunity once every five years to say, hey, I like it or I have a problem with it. That's where I'm coming from. And right now, I know it's not there, and maybe that's not what you want. Maybe that's not the objective of this regional growth strategy, but I think it should be. I think that we're all signatories to this agreement, and we're, we're also binding everyone for 30 years. We're, I'm going to ask a, a question. I just document. want to actually, because May's making a, a point that I think is fundamental to this particular issue. And I, and, I, and I think I know where you're going, Malcolm, because, um, and you're one of the larger communities, so let's face it, you and two other communities could pass this even with a 50% threshold. You, can, you could say it doesn't matter if every municipality in the region objects to, to it's just not working. Well, no, Vancouver and Surrey and Richmond think it's working, so therefore democracy has ruled that um, 19 communities can be overruled by three. Um, right now, if the 15, let's say, um, let's say two-thirds of the communities objected to something, and at the end of the five years, it's just not working for the, say, the rural ones, the, for the folks on the other side of the bridge or, or wherever, right? the folks um, from Boundary Road uh, East or the folks wherever, that two-thirds of the region's municipalities, and let's say it was the smaller ones, Objected. They, they only accommodate, they only count for 20% of the population, so there's no chance that they account for 50% of the vote. So, therefore, when it comes up for review under the current proposal, what Metro, what, what the Act says is that Metro can consider, or must consider actually, whether to review it. And Metro then says, no, we don't want to review it. And um, those 15 communities can be overruled by the remaining seven. Uh, because they don't have enough population. They only have 20% of the population. Um, our proposal would still allow that. Uh, there's no chance that those 15 will ever be able to get enough votes to, to force uh, a review, even if, even if two-thirds of the region's municipalities uh, have serious issue with the regional growth strategy after five years. So I'm, I'm not sure it's, a, it's the perfect tool, but it certainly isn't heavy-handed. What we're really saying is that right now, as it is, three communities can say, no, we're not going to review. And if those three communities have the population, then that's it. It's done. We don't review. We don't even review the RGS. And five years will go by, and those three more communities, we don't review the RGS. So if the RGS is working, 
for the three largest communities or the four largest communities, then it must be working for everybody. And I know around the table there's all kinds of people who are saying actually there's a whole bunch of Metro Vancouver that doesn't work for little communities, doesn't work for uh, communities on the east side of the Pitt River, it doesn't work for whatever. And, and the same way that TransLink is not working for some of the communities of, of Metro Vancouver. This RGS will go on for 30 years without a trigger that allows it to be reviewed if some measure, some significant number, and I, let's say, let's say 19, let's say it's 19. 19 communities object to the RGS as it currently sits after five years uh, you're saying that's not significant. It's not a significant enough number. Democracy is well served by those 19 being overruled by the other three. Um, all, this, all this does is allow a review. And what the review says is, okay, maybe there is this thing here that needs to be fixed and that gets seven, seven of them back on board and we're back, the RGS is back in place. It's not a veto of any of those communities. Not, nobody gets a veto. All of the communities, the, RGS, the Act right now says, Every community gets a veto in establishing the RGS. Every community gets to have its, resol its day in court, its date of resolution. <coughs> the proposal we've put forward isn't that at all. The proposal we've put forward is if, if a significant number, if, a, if communities representing a million people in, the, in Metro Vancouver, if communities representing a million people, let's say, 20, 10 years from now, have some serious concerns with the RGS. We should have a look at it. That's our proposal. If uh, the communities representing a million people have a serious concern with the RGS, let's have a look at it. Your proposal is, if communities have a, representing a million people have a serious concern with the RGS, it's not a big enough. It's not a big enough group, and the remaining communities, the remaining three or four communities, can, can overrule it. I think we have the point. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, Johnny uh, Carline, who's going to be the next questioner, to specifically talk about the right of of individual members for to place their objections. Yeah. Okay. Sure. That's okay. okay. Uh, not, Johnny, not just before you do that, could you confirm that on page sixty, who can apply for an amendment? Yeah. Six point okay. four. Okay. Let's go to it right now. Uh, procedures for regional growth strategy amendments. Johnny, maybe you'd just like to explain that, please. Sure. Thanks, Johnny. <clears throat> and forgive me, Selena, because this is all going to be legalistic and it's got kind of that kind of language, right? Um, yeah. First of all, if I, by, by way of intro to this, um, the process we're dealing with under the Local Government Act uh, basically says any outcome <coughs> got here has got to be consistent with the legislation. You've got to let, we can't have as an outcome that you accept the plan conditional on the legislation being changed. So we're all trying to work within the legislation. That's what we've got to do. And I think you, you said yesterday, Richard, you, you had no problem with the legislation. And the legislation requires any resolution by Metro Vancouver to be by a majority vote. We don't have the legislative ability to have a 33% vote carry. And you also can't have, uh, and this is more a Robert's Rules kind of thing, a, the denial of a negative vote, the failure of a negative vote to carry, doesn't automatically mean that the opposite, the positive, is carried. So if you deny some, if you, if the, if the, motion not to do something fails, no. that doesn't mean you're doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. You've got to have a positive vote. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the vote under the legislation, the vote to have a review has to be an affirmative motion to have a review and it has to pass by a majority vote. That's the legislation. Now whether you want to have a process where ahead of time you have some kind of straw vote to see how many people are really dissatisfied and then try and persuade some other people, even though you're satisfied for the sake of solidarity, you want to have a majority vote to review it, you can do that. But I think the point that Mayor Brody and, and Chair Jackson were making, Malcolm and Lawrence were making, is in fact you don't have to wait for a review if you've got a concern. 
if there's a part of the strategy that's not working for you, you can bring forward an amendment. You can get your representative at the board to say, this isn't working for me, and we would like to amend that part of the strategy. You can put it on the table. And kind of, if you get a seconder, what usually happens is referred off to TAC or, or to the staff, and we'll come back with a report on whether we think it's a good idea or not. And, and that, in essence, is, if you like, a review of the specific concern you have. You don't have to wait five years. You can do it next week. And if you do that, we'll turn that around. And then the resolution of whether to accept that amendment, <coughs> the processes are set out in the, in, the, uh, in, the, um, in, the, in the document. But the lowest, again, the lowest vote you can have is 50% plus that's one. Right. And that's what we've set out in the document for most of the, of the kind of amendments, such as amendments within the urban containment area. They're all 50% plus one. That is considerably easier than where we were with the Livable Region Strategic Plan in the dark days when that started, when you had to have unanimous consent of everybody, and that's why nothing ever changed. So what we've tried to do in the plan, I mean, it's, a, it's got to be a plan, is, and I want to, in my questioning with, uh, of Jim, I want to establish this, that the, the legislation is that the region has his, its plan, and you have your plan, the OCP plan, and and it's the regional context statement that we both have to adopt that is the one that balances one versus the other. So it's not, we can't come and order you to change your plan and you can't come and order us to, to, to change our plan. But what you can do is come to the board, have your representatives on the board, everybody's represented on, on the board, and their representative can say, this isn't working for me, I want to amend it, and put, the, put that amendment on the floor. And I've never known the board in, you know, I don't think I've ever known <coughs> They may have once or twice, but I, I can't recall the board ever saying, I'm not interested in that. They'd usually refer it to staff for uh, a report on the desirability and feasibility of, of making this, and, and away you go. And if you get your 50% plus one, you've changed the plan. You don't have to wait for review. So I think there's three comments, at least, I'm seeing. I may wanted to say something to Jim, and then I think Richard. Two or three things I'm hearing. I think you're saying a trigger does exist, and it's in the format of an amendment. Um, and if everybody's believing that it has to be consistent with, with, with the threshold based in legislation, that point's also been made. So there's going to be two or three, I think, responses to that, starting with May, then Jim, I believe, and then I think Richard. Is that the right order? I think that is. Well, I was going to refer to, to Jim to okay. speak more, but I, I still do not think that the legislation is strong enough <clears throat> in giving every city a voice, and that's the way I feel about it. What you say, if I have a problem in my city with some specific thing and, and come to, yes, I can see the board saying, oh, yes, you know, go ahead, do that. Talking about this, the fundamentals of this agreement, I'm having difficulty with the fundamentals of this document. That's all. I think that every every signatory needs a fair shake. And could I ask Jim to? Because we've had he's had this conversation with me so often. I think he's ready to hit me. Okay. Councilor Reed, I'd never hit you. Um, in fact, we hug on occasion. Yeah, we do. Um, a, a couple things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Tim. Figuratively. Thank you. <laughs> um, a couple things, if I could. And uh, I, I think our proposal, too, there's two parts to it. So I think it should be read in total. One part may be better, other part. It's, we were, we're trying to get at the objection. That, that maybe it's based a little bit on suspicion and lack of trust in that, but it just seemed to us that the the trigger for reviewing the RGS, yes, it's called for in the Act, but it's, it's the author of the plan that decides whether that's going to happen or not. So, okay. so what we're trying to do is, is come forward, and uh, maybe these aren't the best approaches, or um, I'm not sure, but uh, <clears throat> it was to empower the members in some way to have a say as opposed to at the board. And um, so the, the first tact is the ratification, and that's based on a two-thirds. And, 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 and yes, that's that's not specified in the act, but I just think the same way, like the, the type type two minor amendments, you set a higher bar for those uh, those types of land use changes, the green zone changes, 
And so I, whether it's by regional district procedure bylaw or what's been embedded in the implementation <coughs> procedures within the RGS, you have that latitude, I suspect. Um, certainly at, at the municipal level for, um, uh, for local governments, we, uh, there's a, a whole range of bylaws that have that two-thirds level. So um, I, I don't think that's a hindrance, uh, though I would defer to lawyers on that. But I think is the legislation is, is a, a minimum as long as you're not flying in the face of the legislation, I think you could probably enhance or supplement that. So that'd be the first part. So if the two proposals here, the notion of a ratification or a, stat or a member municipal initiated review is, is trying to get at that, that concern that it's the members themselves that can bring something forward and not sure what the numbers are, and, uh, but that's, that's the interest there. Now, it, it is true um, <clears throat> that on page 60 of uh, in that implementation chapter, there is that ability for municipalities by resolution to request amendments. I know through the working group we got that there. Um, we had quite a discussion around that. But I just wanted to clarify with, with Johnny um, is that only through means of an amendment to a regional context statement? And that was kind of my recollection. Because remember, the regional context statement is the connection, it's kind of the umbil umbilical cord, if you will, between the RGS up here and our OCP down there. So is it only through that umbilical cord? Like I was kind of more in the context of you know, each member of the municipality as opposed to the, you know, the okay. bigger region-wide issues. So maybe I'm, I'm a little confused on that point. So. I know Richard wanted to say, but me, if you can answer that, Richard, can you wait just a moment or do you want to, sure. is that okay? Johnny? <clears throat> Two points, or just respond to two points. The, 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 that one is um, any, uh, um, any municipality may by resolution request any amendment. It's not regional context amendment. It's not limited. Um, and, uh, and so there's, uh, there's a procedures for regional growth strategy amendments. It doesn't say regional context amendment amendments. Uh, the board doesn't do that. Um, so, so that route is open, including your fundamental objections, if you if you wish, May. I mean, you could put a resolution forward and say, I, you know, kind of this this whole thing doesn't work for me, and I want to change, work out a proposal to change it. And that's and that sort of what I'm work. doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so long as it's consistent with the act, and the difficulty with with your um, um, argument there, Jim, unfortunately, is is the the two thirds that we provided for in these thresholds are always a two-thirds affirmative vote to do something. Yeah. And right. what you're proposing is a two-thirds negative, and if the two-thirds negative fails, then it's a positive vote. Go that's ahead. not allowed. So that's why you can't make that work, okay? Thanks, Johnny. And I think there's, I think Richard, and then I think Selena, and I, I don't know, Malcolm, I'm sensing maybe you want to say something? I'm not sure about that. I think we're <laughs> beating this to death. I think you're making progress. I know. I, I, I think it's real helpful. Back. <laughs> you might be changing my mind. This is really a hard Let's thing to do. Let's belabor it then. Well, <laughs> you're getting to the bottom of it at, at some level. Man. Um, I knew he'd say that. This is redundant. But, this is some of, but clarifying questions, the purpose of these interactions is to clarify information and create a shared understanding, and that's beginning to happen. Uh, I'm not suggesting everybody's agreeing with everybody, but you're beginning to get there. And I know time is, time is a ticking, but um, maybe a couple more on this and see if, if you need to go further and then determine, okay, what next question or set of questions. Um, Richard, then I think Selena. Is and that I, right? And, I, and thank you for bringing back to the legislation because I agree with, or I'm not, no, not going to contest the legislation. The legislation isn't before us today. There's issues that I've got with the legislation, but I used to write legislation. I used to write regulations uh, for the provincial government. and. Um, and I try to figure out why they would have put in a provision that says at least once every five years a regional district must consider, uh, even though it, it's obviously clear that a regional district can write into its RGS, as this one has, a ri written in provisions that says at any time anyone can propose an amendment and the amendment can move forward or at least be discussed once you get, you know, you get, get this 50% threshold. Um, we are... Uh, a very diverse region, and so what we've proposed is yes, in addition to that, we're not proposing it at any time during the 30-year process that this will extend, but once every five years, at least once every five years, we should be allowed uh, to take a, a deeper look at an issue if, Where's it talking about? <laughs> come back to the million, if, if a less significant number of uh, communities has, uh, has an issue with something. And it's because of the diversity in this region. It's because of the fact 
that this region has so, so many smaller communities and can be dominated at the 50% threshold by three. Three can carry a 50%. So in other words, when the motion comes before us, look, this isn't working for everybody south of the, the bank. Three, and that's it. This isn't working for everybody um, in this particular s s sector, and, and those three votes carry it, and it's done. It cannot be even reviewed. And the, the legislation went to some length to say, no, it must be reviewed. So we're suggesting that the threshold for that review ought to be uh, lower, and you want to use your term lower. I want to have a review. If, um, one of our councillors once presented, well, why don't we have a discussion about this particular issue? And council voted against it, having the discussion. Um, and it was Councillor Robinson that proposed it. Um, <laughs> and council voted against having the discussion. We're, we're talking about having a discussion here, having the, having the review of the, of the RGS, having an in-depth review, and let's have a look at the issues you've got. Because I think coming out of this table, and I think I'm starting to see glimpses of this hope that we're all going to come to an agreement that you're right, that, that actually makes an improvement. And I would foresee a day when, when New Westminster has an issue with some element, and, and so does Langley, and so does uh, uh, Maple Ridge, and together they get enough votes to say, okay, let's have a review, let's have a look at it. It doesn't mean that it carries, obviously it doesn't change. This isn't a two-thirds threshold for changing. This is a, or a one-third threshold for changing. It's a one-third threshold for having the talk about whether or not it works. And then, in the, in the end, you still need a 50% threshold for changing it. Um, I don't see it at all inconsistent with the Act, because the Act went to some length to say, no, you must look at it. You must look at whether you look at it. And we're saying, okay, then the threshold for looking at whether you look at it is 33%, 34%. Selena, and I don't, yeah, go ahead, please. <clears throat> Um, I, I appreciate the, the clarification that you bring to the table, Johnny. I find it very helpful. I'm, I'm curious if, if, um, if the issue brought forward by several communities was not so much related to the Type 2 and Type 3 amendments, which seem to be more around land use, but that there's, there's discovery that the plan itself is missing a piece, a uh, performance measure. or uh, What's the trigger? What's the... Or, or is it just whenever there's enough 50% plus one to say, yes, we need to look at this, and so then there's the review it, that a smaller number can't bring that forward? Only if Metro brings it up. Or does Metro have to bring it up? I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to understand. What are the mechanics of that? The mechanics of that. Yeah. Answer that again, John. Okay. The, any action by Metro has to be by resolution, and it has to be passed by a majority vote. That's unfortunately the beginning and end of the story to, to, to this entire discussion. It's the, and it would be as if in a is Tim here kind of it would be if you know, I mean I, 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 Vancouver's got a party system and it would be if the majority the majority party always carries and one of the minority parties says I'm I'm sick of this I'm I'm not getting a look in I want to change the strategy so that you know if only a third of us vote for it we can refer this back to to have a review that may or may not have political merit but it doesn't have standing in law. In law, you've, if, if you've got to persuade 50% plus one of your council to do anything before it passes a resolution, that's just the way it is. Bruce? I, I'm sorry, John, I just missed the clarification. I believe Selena was asking uh, if there's other communities as an external trigger, or that's strictly through a 50% vote, is what I think I heard you say, at Metro through resolution. There's no other ex external thing that can come into the game. Is that what you're saying? I'm not challenging, just, just making sure I heard you. The, the resolution has to pass by a 50% plus one plus vote at Metro Board. I found it. Okay, Richard. Okay, so the, the objection to this one is the legal tenant that suggests that we can't do this. And that, that's, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by that because this, the RGS is enabled by legislation, yes. and the RGS legislation is silent on the threshold. Okay. So I'm wondering if we can establish different thresholds in the RGS document for different functions uh, other than 50%. Um, I'm, I'm having trouble understanding that. But I, I'd be pleased to refer this particular question to perhaps we <coughs> let's get the legal opinion as to whether if we obviously if we can do it, then the objection is, is overwhelmed. And, uh, and uh, it sounds to me like the, R the RGS legislation, I read the legislation carefully. I'm no lawyer, but I know there's a lawyer directly opposite me. Uh, that's, that is silent on the threshold, but 
it, the legislation clearly permits different thresholds to be adopted in an RGS, and our proposal was to amend the RGS to adopt a different threshold for this particular that's review that's process good. that's enabled by the legislation. So I'm... Um, Jamie. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm left with this, yeah. I mean, clearly the Local Government Act anticipates this, and um, I'm... I right. think we'll get some there's, yeah, there's three or four comments on this. There is a legal opinion in the room, but I'm not sure that that... that well, it, and it's Malcolm actually pretty really simple, and I look to Mr. Bennett to agree or disagree with me. Yes. But 791 of the Local Government Act says that, quite specifically, that unless otherwise stated, a resolution must be approved by 50% plus one, by a majority. That's the legislation. Unless the legislation sets out a particular type of item that's before it that requires a two-thirds vote, it's 50% plus one. There is no other option. And it is, and it is never 33%. Is then, never. Then, okay, then if it's always 50% no. plus one, then we there's a whole bunch of other stuff that has to be amended because we've got some in here where it's 66%. It can be higher. No. Oh, I thought it was it always 60 No, I said 50% plus one unless otherwise stated in the legislation. And the, legis that the legislation sets out those items that must be passed by a two-thirds majority. And yet we've adjusted those in the most recent draft of the RGS. We've changed those items, some of the items that required a two-thirds. Are those not spelled out in the legislation? Uh, I don't know which section. Question the consistency of some of the thresholds in the document uh, as according or not to legislation. Um, Malcolm, did you want to speak to this? Well, I, th I, th oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Let's hear from Mr. Bennett. Uh, you can put into the RGS a provision that terminates in five years and don't have a vote. If, if, if you're going to force a vote, it has to be 50%. But this isn't about forcing a vote. It's about creating a review. And as long as it is not inconsistent with Section 869.2, it's fine. So if, if the Act says it has to be 50%, you can't change it to say two-thirds has to be, two-thirds is necessary for any review. That would be inconsistent. But you can increase it and make it stronger. So you're supplementing the act. But it's fine. My right. oh, just a minute. Just a minute. Yeah. So you're saying it's it, it says in the act you've got to have 50% plus <coughs> one for a review. So you're saying it's okay for 33%. If you make it stronger, that's fine. You, you can't make but it But that's weaker. That's what, okay, I think we're going to need to get some legal opinions here and <laughs> have you guys go off and work on it. Because it, it do you, would it be helpful to have the province speak on this or not? No, or is it much more legal lawyers. opinion? We need lawyers, not the province, to speak on it. Okay. Um, yes, Lois, and then maybe that's the... I'd be the interested in hearing from the province as well. Sure so the maybe that, let's they have to be in a very It's a trigger to see if there is a... At review. any point in time, as I sat on that chair and continue to sit on the chair, anyone can come forward, whether it's Richard or your council, or not, you know, two-thirds of your council, whatever, can come forward, put a motion from your chair to review anything. That's simple. That's what's written here in number 60. Anybody at any time can come forward and review this document. There's no problem with that. We've done it with the, uh, with the solid waste management plan. Delta said, we want to review. This was 10 years ago. We got a review. It took 12 years to do it, but nonetheless, it was still done. This body has the ability to make a review. That legislation, in the absence of a review request by this board, must review after five years. No. That's very simple. Must review. Or must consider. Must consider. consider. Whether to In other words, must can consider. reject a review. Can reject a review if it yes. wants. Yes, but if there is no request for any review in five-year period, the, the board must consider the review. That is a good insurance for everybody, large and small, to have an ability to come forward and say, I want a review, right? Because if nobody's done it for five years, it comes forward. You, do you consider a review of this plan, yes or no? And the board will say yes or no, probably yes. The other thing we have to remember is we all presuppose that we're all going to be sitting around a table like this in five or ten years' time. No. Don't ever presuppose that, please. <laughs> uh, and if the municipality comes forward and asks for a review and it comes here and we say yes, 
then it has to be 50%. I mean, can you imagine going forward to the provincial government and saying, uh, we only need 33% for the HST to pass. 33% will pass the HST. 50% plus one forever has been the balance forever has been the balance. And I don't believe for one second that there's gonna be a gang up on any one of the small communities. We've never seen it here that I can remember. Correct me if I'm wrong. People are very considerate at this table of all the smaller municipalities, including our, our uh, TFN who has, what, 120 people on the band I just hear right. someone with one vote. Can so that, that. so that's, it. that's already here, that's already there. We have the ability to do all that. That's all here in the legislation, and I don't know what the problem is. I really don't see the problem. And there's, I think there's three or four people who want to speak to this, and I don't know how, I mean, I, I think it's helpful you're getting a lot of clarity, but it is getting to be, you know, 25 to three. Um, so I think um, Malcolm wanted to say something, and I'm noticing some comments from Selena. don't know if those are public or not, and then uh, I believe Richard wanted to say something. And then I don't know where, how, if you put this to bed for now, or whether the trigger that the amendment allows is enough, the mechanics of that, and the fact that there is this 50 plus one in the legislation, the lawyers might have to go out and deliberate a bit about that, don't know. Okay. Uh, so I've got, I've got two points. Uh, first of all, in 869, uh, when they're talking about you have to consider whether to review the RGS, it says for that, for the purposes of that subsection, the regional district must provide an opportunity for input on the need to re for review from the persons, organizations, authorities referred to in section 855 sub 2, which talks about citizens, affected local governments, First Nations, school boards, greater. It's, uh, my point is that what they're talking about every five years is a very wide review with, with input <laughs> from, from various parties, and I'm presuming that that would include input on the need for a review. So, so you've got that process in the act, and uh, as the chair mentions, anytime anyone makes a motion, that's, they can do it. The second thing is, and I wish, wish to correct Richard on this or bring it to his attention, uh, I, I will give my personal viewpoint here. I don't want to reduce the threshold from 50% plus one. I can see sometimes we want to raise that, but I don't want to, Personally, I don't want to decrease it. And so I'm, uh, you're saying why? Yeah. Because that's what democracy is. That's because we have a regional plan, and a regional plan has consequences. And you have to think of what those consequences are, and that's part of democracy, that you do things based on 50% plus one. So that's, that's the way I see it. So my point in saying this is, just because, let's say we find that the lawyers, with all due respect, are incorrect and you could have a one-third threshold, I don't think that you should assume then that you have an agreement on that point because uh, I don't think you would. Three or four comments, I think. I, I know Bruce and Jim probably had something to say about this. We should. And then at the some point have. decide, because this is sort of question one or two, uh, and I don't know how many other questions there are, and I don't know how many affected other communities want to chime in at some point. So, but it's a good conversation. <laughs> at least it's I, easy for me to say. You know, sorry, I, go ahead. Did you have if a, our process... Wait, Richard, my apologies. Oh, Richard also. I think it was you. I saw Bruce, Jim kind of together on this, and then maybe we'll turn it over to Richard and then back to you, gentlemen. Oh. I, I, too, feel a, a spirit that there's, there's greater dialogue here than two, you, two days ago. And in, in that spirit, I just want to make sure we're, we're pointing out that... Our, our proposal here around the threshold does not change the threshold by which any amendment is considered. Our threshold change here is to if a review occurs um, and allowing that greater dialogue, which this region is well respected for, for allowing a review of this document, not changing the threshold by which it is amended. And I just hope we can, we can keep that distinction. And my apologies, I think I made it screwed up the speaking order, Richard. So there is a difference there. To trigger, it's one third, but the regular 50% plus one would apply everywhere else. And the amendment that some suggest provides that opportunity, don't know if it goes far enough. Uh, the gang up big versus small, that's a philosophical conflict that'll last forever. Don't know how you get around that, but uh, you're having a good talk about it. Yeah, and, and that's, that's where it is. It's ultimately whether three communities can veto the review. And that's, okay. right now it, it, it's that way. And, I, and I'm not saying it would happen, I'm just saying that if it can't happen, then I'm not sure what the difficulty is here. It allows 
a group of community a group of communities that represents an enormous portion of the of Metro Vancouver uh, represents arguably a million people just to allow a review and we've got some other groups that are allowed to get involved in that process in order to inform that decision and they put forward their suggestions about particular issues and ultimately if Metro Vancouver overwhelmingly doesn't want the review it's not going to happen but if a significant portion, if a critical mass of lower mainland municipalities want to have a look at it. This is only about having a look at it. It's only about having a dialogue. It's only about 50%. Okay, you could say that it, no, it has to be almost everybody. It has to be the 50% plus one. It has to be, uh, in, in, in the case that Surrey and Vancouver don't want it, it has to be everybody else that wants it. Everybody else must want it. And any of them that don't want it, uh, essentially the, the review doesn't take place. And I you know, so, assuming that they're of any size at all. And I, I'm, as one of the smaller communities, one of the smaller communities, we're the fifth largest, it just seems that we might want to allow smaller jurisdictions to at least have a better voice, to be able to have the dialogue. This isn't about changing it, this is about looking at it. And I, I didn't realize that we were going to have so much uh, concern about it because it's only about the review that's anticipated by the legislation. As well, I thought a few minutes ago the objection was you can't do it, it's illegal. Uh, so um, perhaps I, 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 we had difference of opinion from lawyers, but that's what normally happens when you have two lawyers. Um, and if you bring in a third lawyer, you usually get a third opinion. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm contemplating that uh, this, I can't imagine that there would be any objection to, to just the discussion. Having, initiating a discussion, if, I mean, it, Metro Vancouver is saying that if a third of the people want a discussion, that's not enough. If 40% of the population of the Lower Mainland wants to look at this, open up this plan and have a look at it, that's not enough. It has to be 51%. And uh, that, this is a 30-year document. Uh, we've got a serious concern with that. Jim, then Johnny, and then maybe think about a break even. I don't know if that's premature, but I think it's probably going to going to have to happen. Actually, uh, Jimmy, I was just going to suggest that it's time to maybe move on again. But first, let me say I'm really pleased and encouraged by the, the dialogue at the table here. And maybe something as simple as the setting and the setup. So I, I, I commend the principal players here at the table. Um, <coughs> around this piece, uh, yeah, I guess there's a question we can refer off to the lawyers because I myself am having a tough time following up, but maybe that's if, if there's agreement here, we can take that away. Basically, there's, there's two pieces to this. There's, there's the decision of, of who and how the review is initiated Trigger. and the threshold for that review. Um, I should know it, and I had a quick scan, but I can't see in the RGS where it talks about that five-year review. And I realize in bylaws you don't always have everything that's in the legislation. You, you, you want to be careful around that as a drafter of a bylaw, but um, I don't believe it's in there. Um, maybe it should be in there. That's, that's a pretty uh, key milestone date. And, and, and maybe and maybe something that should be um, with that piece is just that amplification, that, that clarification that Johnny provided that this uh, amendment that can be initiated by a member of municipality is not just restricted to its, its RCS, but also it can, you know, if it reaches whatever threshold in the end the elected officials agree to, um, but it can be initiated that way and not just by uh, a, a board uh, resolution. It, obviously, they have to get the support at the board whatever that threshold might be. So that would be my suggestion. If, if there's comfort with that general approach, if you would empower staff to take that away and, and work on that, um, we would get our best shot. And I want to ask Johnny to, not suggesting the last word on this, but to certainly chime in and take a bit of a break. People consider that. And if there's direction going out to council to, to review this and whether the province needs to be involved or not, or if that's the procedural resolution for now, I think it has to be carefully articulated exactly what's going to happen uh, if that's, in fact, a, a consensus decision on that note. But I'm going to suggest, Johnny, speak to this, and then let's take uh, a break and come back and... Um, see if there is consensus on what will happen with respect to this and legal opinions and, and what have you. My only comment is the, the the regional district is what the regional district is. It just happens to have 20 odd municipalities with different weighted votes and as in any other regional district if you add up a certain number of municipalities, the biggest municipalities, they have the majority. And that affects everything we do. Everything we do. The water, the water plan, the, the solid waste plan, the liquid waste plan, the air quality plan, 
everything. That, that whoever those larger municipalities are that add up to the majority vote, they, if they get together, they have the corpse. And that's true of every regional district. And I think what we really need to do is think more about the culture that goes on around the board, that if a significant minority of the board has, wants something to be looked at, they usually can persuade the majority to have a look at it. If they can't, if they can't persuade the majority to have even a look at it, there is no bloody chance that they'll get any change. So it's a bit pointless to have, to have a minority impose its view on, I insist on having a review, if the majority <coughs> are so convinced that no change should be considered that he won't even vote for a review. I mean, it seems fairly futile. So apart from the legal argument, just the political culture is, most times, if, you, if, it's, if it's a reasonable kind of thing, then even if people aren't prepared, it's like, it's like people who second motions for the purpose of discussion, even though they're going to vote against it. The political culture is, if there's a reasonable thing coming forward, and a, you can see a fair number of people upset, then by and large, the board will go along with that. But a review to a plan is not a trivial thing. A review to a plan is a, is a as, we, as we've seen in this process, it takes a lot of resources and a lot of effort from all of us. And therefore, it should be something that is considered with some weight. And at the end of the day, if you're going to have a review, the majority should be supporting that. And so that would, that would seem to be the argument we're going. And I, I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure that we can do anything more by chasing this thing around the circle if, we're, if what we're saying is something as, as waiting as a, an expensive an undertaking as a review should be supported by the majority if it's to take place, and we believe that the, the Local Government Act requires a majority to support a, an affirmative vote to have such a review, I'm just not sure what else we can do to enlighten, enlighten each other, and this is a question and answer session, mm -hmm. I don't know what more we can do to enlighten each other about how we can get round those two fundamental positions of what constitutes a, an appropriate vote and what constitutes a legal vote for an affirmative vote to, to carry out a review. Absolutely. No, and, I, and I suspect that you know, clearly the question of its legality ought to be um, determined because if it is legal, then if it's not legal, then there's not much point moving forward with the discussion. I, I expect, though, that um, based on my experience with other forms of Local Government Act uh, elements, uh, that when uh, an item is silent on something like this, then and it doesn't actually, it isn't a positive action that the um, that the provision is required to um, to put in place, that uh, that the threshold can be adjusted. And I, we heard a, a legal opinion a short time ago that conflicted with another one, and so maybe we need to put that question as to whether or not it is permitted, and, and if it is permitted, then clearly it's something that we can consider. Um, uh, and if it isn't permitted, then it's something that we can't consider. Uh, but um, it seems clear that all we're trying to do is second the motion. Um, and I have seen instances when people have seconded the motion for discussion and suddenly the light goes on after the middle of the discussion and people realize, oh, that's what you're talking about. Oh, now we understand. Because I'll tell you, going into this, until last Tuesday, it was clear to me that despite the fact that you'd written us letters on all kinds of our objections, no one seemed to understand our objections. And now we're having discussion about, oh, now we understand. Okay, so it's, it's that particular element. And we're actually getting to the point where some of them are being debated as to whether or not a particular number is the right number or whatever. I think that discussion is always valuable. I don't expect anybody to propose frivolously a review because I'll tell you the process that I've discovered in the course of dealing with it, a dispute resolution is so time consuming <coughs> and eats up um, hundred, thousands of hours of our staff time and our council members time to try to put forward uh, suggestions that we think aren't, they aren't parochial, they're not of uh, Coquitlam's interest. Coquitlam's interests aren't here. They've already been dealt with. 
This is regional interests. Um, I don't know that anybody would be expecting a review to be local. It would be a review that is regional. And uh, a regional review is something, I actually, I think it ought to be, the, one of the debates we had was, it, consistent with this, we could actually say, no, it's actually, we're going to have a review every five years. But we write an RGS <coughs> that says every five years this will be reviewed. So it essentially replaces uh, 869 sub 2, and every five years, let's have a review. And it allows us then to, we proposed something that we thought, well, if everyone's comfortable with it, or if the vast majority are comfortable with it, we don't have to propose this. But uh, 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 I would be perfectly comfortable with a re review that takes place every five years. Because, and at the course of the review, we assign it to the regional growth, the regional planning committee, although I'm not sure they'll ever put me on that again. Um, uh, assign it to the regional planning committee and uh, <laughs> okay I, 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 I can see the point <laughs> I, I think we can take a break now okay but Johnny wanna, do you want to take the break and, or Johnny can you is this a wrap up comment, a last comment I would like to wrap this one up yeah there was just a reference to the legal opinion and I just want to be <coughs> clear because I, I think there were some differences but I think what I heard Mr. Bennett say is that you can strengthen Yes. a resolution. And so what we have here, if you, if you like, treat this uh, resolution to have a review huh. as a review, as a, as a resolution to go spend some money on a review, and we're saying the, 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 the act says you've got to have a 50% plus one before you can get a permission to go and spend money on that review. And by strengthening, I think what Mr. Bennett actually means is if you want to make that 60% or 70%, make it even tougher, that's strengthening it. But I can't imagine it, I mean, it, what he's way. saying is, is, is strengthening the clause by saying that if you want to go and spend a couple of million dollars on a review, you can actually make the threshold 25%. If 25% of, of your council uh, decides that that's the threshold to go and have a capital project, you can do that. I don't think that's strengthening strengthening. In, in the way that that normally is, is there. And, I, I, but, and, but and we, we have, we have to accept, though, that that relates to this agreement. This agreement is like, uh, let's say we all got together, or several communities got together and did a function. Let's call it We're taking a break. Um, labor relations or let's not. You, okay. You, <laughs> yeah. or, a, or a utility or some other function. Let's say we decided to do an air quality utility. And we got together and we set up the parameters for the air. And in the parameters, we said, oh, and any community can veto something. And we, we all agreed that that's what we were doing. This is a regional growth strategy. This is an agreement among the municipalities. It, is, uh, it enables another set of rules to take over. And it could put in place a veto by one community or a call by one community for a revision or something like that. Um, it, uh, it would allow a, a different threshold to be established because this is a separate agreement. This is a, a separate document. But it and, would Sorry, but it would have to be provided for in the letters patent or the legislation that established that, and this isn't. And I think Mr. Bennett has, wasn't sure that the point, that the reflection of his point of view was entirely accurate. And I don't know, Mr. Bennett, whether you can clarify that, and literally I'm going to impose a break in a minute. I don't usually do this kind of stuff. Uh, can you do that in sort of 30 seconds or less? <laughs> yeah, I think if you, if you try to do the way Johnny said, you're actually contrary to the legislation. If it says you have to do a review every five years, you can't say in your RGS we're not going to never do a review. That would be contrary. Right. Unless the RGS no. is going to be adopted by everybody. And that's that's your authority with the RGS to say, we're going to do a review with a lower percentage. And everybody's agreed to that at the beginning. That's where the authority comes from. And, it, and it's embedded oh, into the RGS. Yeah. It's academic anyway. And there, yeah, okay, so for some it's academic, but there's clearly a legal dis di uh, difference of interpretation on this. And on that note, let's take a break. It's five, okay, now Jim, what? Just very briefly. Very, again. very briefly. Because <laughs> I think we're very close to moving ahead here. There's, 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 two, there's two pieces. There's the threshold, yeah. which we can go back and forth yeah. and discuss, but there's the clarity around a review. Yeah. It's not in the RGS right now. And it's not clear that a member of municipal initiated amendment can, can do that. So if, 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 if it we... It says that right here. Well, t are you looking at section six? No, no. It's the five-year review. No. We're talking about the amendment process. And we're talking sort of about two things. Because I think, I th again, we're going to go on for a bit. Sure. So we're going to pause right now. And it's 15 minutes. So back at 10 past three. Please. All right. 10 past three. I'll be here. Um, five-year review doesn't say anything. Yeah. Let's see.
Okay, we're reconvening, so thanks for uh, getting back to this. Thanks for the fruit and cookies and refreshments that'll keep us going with some sugar for the next couple of hours. I have vodka. Are you going to share? No, not a All right, um, Lois gave me permission to begin. She's got a call she had to take. Um, my understanding is Malcolm had something to say. Yeah. I think Richard had something to say. Then, then at some point, I think you're going to have to decide, what do you do with this issue? There's been some suggestion of lawyers going off and seeing if they can come to terms about this. I, I don't know if that's changed over break or people have deliberated about it and have some conclusion. And then some thought about, okay, further questions and how do you use your next hour and a half, believe it or not. That's short. And I'm getting some pressure to speed this up. So let's move on. Fine by me. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, table this uh, this memo uh, from the City of Langley staff uh, re uh, regarding this matter. So if I could, if we, I don't know what we do to get it into the record. Um, circulate. I guess circulate. I don't know any record. I'm not Just keeping like, records. I do. Just like Burnaby's. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. been received. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like Burnaby's. Um, secondly, uh, and more to the point, um, uh, I have uh, commiserated with the people on the Intergovernmental Committee and uh, other politicians who are in the room, um, though I, I didn't have a chance to speak to Colleen, I admit. Um, and the message I've been asked to give is, number one, uh, there is no interest in anyone by any party to reducing the threshold. And secondly, the, the verification for that point of view is in the fact, if, it, if it's not otherwise by what they say, uh, it's in the fact that the uh, RGS, as it is proposed, has been accepted by all the other cities. So uh, from my point of view, I don't think we need legal opinions. Um, that is, that's, uh, we can we can talk about uh, whether there might be some uh, common ground, but uh, to uh, lower the threshold is not on. Richard? Okay, then uh, we might as well just quit meeting then, because if we're going to use the fact that every municipality has already adopted the RGS as the reason why none of these changes can be accepted, then why why are we here? I mean, if none of them can be accepted because every municipality has already accepted the RGS, then the, the Act anticipates a process where every municipality accepts the RGS except one or two or three, and then they go together and they try to work out the details. I mean, that's a ridiculous, uh, I'm not, I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but I mean, clearly, you, the fact that everyone has, object, has already accepted the RGS is not particularly relevant to what we're doing at the table because we're proposing some improvements to it, and I suggest that their acceptance of the RGS without this particular provision doesn't mean that they wouldn't accept the provision. In fact, one of them has already suggested that it has some, some merit. And I, I, I would urge, I would urge um, we uh, a couple of weeks ago submitted our document to Metro and all of the folks around here about two weeks to review it. Um, we weren't trying to hold our cards tight to our chest. Um, uh, and I don't think Burnaby was trying to hold their card site to the chest. They did get us the document. I, I don't know why this wasn't distributed before the, the break, because it would have allowed us to read it. Um, it was obviously available before the break. And I'd urge, and I know that there's some questions here that Metro Vancouver has, and I welcome the submission of those questions so that we can, if this is about clarification, and this process we're in right now is clarification, then submit the questions to us and we'll be able to get enough background documentation so that we could submit our clarifications of the items that you're going to raise since you've already written them down, uh, unless it's about uh, something else. I think it's, this is the process where we're trying to clarify to come to some agreement. So I urge you to please send your documents in to us before the meeting rather than partway through the meeting because we can't, we, we can't read them. But I, I was able to read this one. This one says, this is a member of municipality. It's recognized that the suggestion by Coquitlam for a future opportunity to review our successes and failures of the proposed RGS, perhaps at the five-year mark, has some merit. While formal council endorsement of any change in this matter would need to be forwarded to all councils, advancement of an agreement on this point is supported. And that, that actually is by Burnaby. And Burnaby, of course, is the chair of the 
uh, Regional Planning Committee. I'm the Vice Chair of the Regional Planning Committee. So now the Chair and the Vice Chair both are in agreement that perhaps we ought to have a five-year I think we, if you're going to quote Burnaby, you better let Burnaby have a chance to have a say so. Well, in fact, I did. I and did, I Burnaby just put up a finger, and I don't mean it in any bad way. Not the, the, no, no, so, no. How, how, how do you want to deal with Could I get a clarification as to which finger? Yeah, no, it, that's all good. Um, okay. Um, no, and in fact, and I, and I didn't want to misstate it, so I did have a chat with, uh, right. with Councillor Jordan before this because I wanted to make sure that I understood Burnaby's position. Uh, you get down to the bottom, and it does say, Generally, the city would support that the remaining Coquitlam proposals that we haven't been able to resolve here could be considered. We could advance them to the five-year review that we've just agreed to. So um, it does make sense that having agreed to this five-year review, um, and I... What five-year review oh, have we agreed to? No, I, I'm just saying that if we have agreed to, if we do agree on a five-year review... There is I, one in the Act. Okay. We have no choice. Consideration. No, no, that, no, the one in the Act says that we must consider whether or not we do a five-year review. And if, um, uh, Mayor, I assume it's Mayor Corgan and his council, um, have suggested that it does have merit. Um, and and I'm, so I'm, I'm not trying to put words in their mouth, and I'm, I'm pleased that Mayor Corgan and his council, and Councillor Jordan did confirm that, that, that their position is that it... it, it Let's hear from Councillor Jordan, it, it, could we? But, are you, uh, Richard, do you want to finish where you're at, and then I think co co I, I, I if I may call you Colleen, put up a finger, which means she's got something to say on this, and you're quoting Actually, something let, they wrote. So let, let me defer, let's finish there, because, and then because as I say, we did have a discussion about this ahead of time, so that I wasn't misstating their position, and I and I trust I haven't. Go ahead. Um, you and you have to, sorry, you you probably know you have to activate it by pushing some button. I think everybody will, will want to hear you. There we go. Um, just you missed out a little phrase in the middle there, with the ratification vote by the board. Yeah. Right? So a five-year review according to the Act with the support of the board. Right. So when when uh, um, there Stuart read out the line, he skipped over a phrase that said, perhaps, a, perhaps at the every five-year mark with the ratification vote by the board. So to isn't have a that five year. What the access? Exactly. Well, no, I'm sorry. There, I skipped over several sentences, got, several phrases, because I thought they were ancillary to it. Um, because obviously, if you've reviewed and you've changed anything, you need to ratify it by the board. I, I don't. Uh, I, I didn't say, take it to mean that he was suggesting, or that council is, council in Burnaby is suggesting, mm -hmm. that the act has some merit. Yeah. Uh, they they were suggesting that our proposal has some merit. Because um, the Act already requires um, a consideration of a five-year review, and so I just took it to mean that, um, in fact, when you get down to the last paragraph, it says generally the city would support that the remaining Coquitlam proposals would be reconsidered at the time of the five-year review. Well, they can't be considered at the time of the five-year review unless we've just agreed to a five-year review. The five-year review allows us to refer these things there. I'll tell you, the the background on this particular one is this, in fact, all of our proposals, our council is very, in Coquitlam, is very diverse, as I'm sure your councils are, and um, there were posi positions around the table that suggested, well, why not just have a five-year review? Every five years, we're going to review the, the RGS. It's as, it's as complex and as detailed and as far-reaching a, a, a document as that. So we could have a five-year review, and someone suggested, well, okay, well, why don't we have a five-year review unless two-thirds say we don't need it, which is essentially this. It's a, it's a higher bar. It's, I know you could... We've just gone around in a circle. I'm sorry. Ooh. I didn't interrupt every any time you spoke. So, so where, where are we with this issue? Why not just yeah. have a mandatory five-year review? And that's, in fact, I'm still of the position that this is a big <clears> document <throat> with lots of implications, and maybe it should just be five years, period. And uh, it's automatically reviewed every five years. We, the compromise was that we would put in place and it's automatically reviewed every five years unless two thirds of the board uh, says otherwise. So it is a high high bar um, to uh, to kill a review. It's a higher bar than fifty percent. But um, and council or legal counsel seems to suggest that's okay. And Burnaby seems to think it's it's got merit. And so I'm. I'm, I'm hoping that we could move forward because there's some really int there's some really neat and I want Councillor Selina uh, Selina to actually be able to 
present some of the thoughts related to the next item because I, I there, if we're going to just, uh, what I've heard today is that it's a non-starter. Moving on. I think we should move on. So where do you do it? Uh, is there agreement that it gets uh, it gets legally analyzed by people with different opinions to see if there's consensus? Um, I, I assume you could each direct legal counsel to do that. They've done it in this room. No. The, the point that they were going to consider is whether it can be Correct. legally uh, reduced from 50% to some lower number. And the answer is no one will support it from Metro Vancouver. Okay? What don't we understand about that? I think it's a very clear position. So, okay. So, so if I might, so, so Malcolm, what you're, what you're saying is that uh, solution that we've proposed has no, won't have traction. That's what I'm saying. That's right, so what you're saying. Yeah. So, the, so the concern still remains um, and, um, that we, um, we, what we're saying is we ought to have um, greater consideration in this document for a review. And it could be, and I think what I hear Richard saying is, then can we put in that automatically in five years there will be a review? Now, I did hear Johnny say he had some concern about the expense of that and what that means. But so maybe there ought to be um, some sort of threshold that would suggest, um, you know, unless, unless it's supported by two thirds or a percent or whatever. I mean, I'm, we're open to, to negotiate that. Uh, which also brings, and, I, and I, if we get a chance to talk about it, you know, and I do appreciate the costs that go in with doing a review, um, and that's our third proposal, which has to do with the, the um, performance measures around how we operate around the RGS and, and how much money goes into, you know, if there's many, many, many amendments that keep coming through, um, I think that it would be helpful to have as part of the performance measures yeah, some sort of documentation about the strengths and weaknesses of the process. And th there isn't sort of an internal look at, as a process, how is this working? So. We're, we, okay, you're moving into, we're I'm moving to proposal ahead, three, but there's, there's a couple of other things that have occurred to me. I think on the one hand, we were talking about a, a, a trigger a review that took a lower threshold of a one third. Then I think you're saying, well, maybe it should be mandatorily every five years unless some high threshold determines it's not. So things are getting mal malleable, and that's what negotiation is. And I don't know if you're wanting to entertain any of those at this point further, or because I now I think you're suggesting because of the implications of doing a review, whether it's decided by two, th well, however it's decided, it's going to cost some dough. Therefore, this next proposal around internal performance measures to determine use of resource is the right place to turn. Yeah, you know, Mr. Uh, facilitator. Um, Aren't we in a question period here? You're in a bit of both, actually. A bit of both. Because people are sh trading back both questions, and the answer to those questions are suggesting other things. So it's, it's not clearly question and answer. There's almost the hints of possibility emerging. So it's hard to, to, well, to limit it there. Yeah. But, if I could interrupt yeah. for a second, Please. My, my deep apologies for that. Because uh, it's not a question period. At some point, we, uh, about two minutes ago, someone said it's a non-starter. Well, that's not a question period. That's not even a clarification period. That's a, that's a negotiation that says, no, we've already polled everyone at Metro, and they said no one at Metro will support it, apart from Burnaby, who's the chair of the committee. Um, and, of course, Coquitlam, the vice chair of the committee. But I, 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 it may not be accurate, but I'm just going on the basis of what, what Burnaby wrote about it. But, that's, but let's set that aside for a moment. If, if this is just clarification questions, then let's not then negotiate. Let's just clarify. Okay. But we, you know, clearly there's been elements of the negotiation going on. So. I'm, I'm just trying to right. save the time of this August group okay. by Likewise. getting to the point. And secondly, I think that if if uh, Richard is going to quote Burnaby's position, I think it has to be accurate, and I think it needs to come from Burnaby. And it's been pointed out that you are missing essential phrases in terms of what you're saying. I'll read it out in the record then. Do you, well, there's no record, and I want to encourage that any participating uh, local governments who have a voice um, as participants, there is a time and place for them to ask questions. Now, I was encouraged that you wanted to wait till Metro had been done with their questions and then open up 
discussion uh, questions, it seems to me, by other participating affected local governments. You can change process anytime you want, um, but new submissions are coming, people are beginning to quote from them, some people are in the room, so this is something to be considered. Okay, and I, did, I, I don't ever want to, uh, um, I left out a couple of the phrases that I thought were ancillary, I thought they were, um, I will read the whole thing because I do want to be clear, it, it is recognized, this is from Burnaby's document, um, they're referring to our proposal which would um, provide better or an enhanced five year uh, review, enhanced from what is currently required by the legislation. It is recognized that the suggestion by the City of Coquitlam for a future opportunity to review our successes and failures of the proposed RGS dash, perhaps at the five at, at the every five year mark, comma, with a ratification vote by the board dash, has some merit. While formal council endorsement of any change in this matter would need to be forwarded to all the councils for more careful consideration. Advancement of an agreement on this point is supported. Now, they're supporting advancement of an agreement um, for a change to what the current is. The current legislation requires a five-year vote by the board as to whether to do it. So obviously, they're contemplating that we're proposing something better than that, and we are different from that, and we know, know we are. And they're saying that our proposal has some merit, and advancement of an agreement on this point is supported. And I, and I, if I, in any way, um, uh, didn't didn't state that entirely clearly. My deep apologies to Burnaby and to the uh, this this group because I didn't mean to misinterpret anything or interpret anything other than the way Burnaby intended. So I think if if the segue that uh, Selena was beginning to bring on is the right place to go, and I'm not necessarily suggesting that the questions that that uh, Metro Vancouver has point to Proposal 3 at this point, but probably you're going to want to make sure you've got whatever other questions with respect to the proposals or the objections I have a chance to ask and answer those. And it's hard sometimes not to move into what sounds like negotiation. If people want to be real discreet about that, I can get pretty fastidious, but I, I don't know. Um, and then also Selena reminded us that given the time, given that other affected participating local governments have shown up here today, they probably have questions too. The agreement among yourselves, I think, procedurally was for Metro to finish, then them to have their t uh, time to do it. Now you can you can continue to abide by that, or you can uh, allow ch chances for those who are who've been listening carefully to ask questions with respect to the proposals that you're dealing with. We, we're not going to jump around from one to six to two to three, so it's really up to you. Um, time to move on uh, is one question. The second question is if there are affected local governments that want to question this proposal. Appreciate some people think it's been beaten to death. Um, should you allow that to happen now? Uh, the suggestion is that I would finish my questions, which I hope to be able to do fairly shortly, and then uh, Johnny Carline would be able to ask his questions of, of uh, Coquitlam staff. And then the affected local governments, or the participating local governments would be here too. Uh, but yeah, uh, yes, the Intergov Committee and the participating parties. Okay, and I don't know how long this is all going to take, but I hope there's a time for all of you, but you've got about another hour in town on your hands. So, um, with that, um, Malcolm, if you'd just like to continue. Okay, let's go to Proposal 3, uh, which is the one relating to costs. I'm just wondering how this plan differs from all the other plans that it requires special treatment like this in your proposal. Sorry, I don't. I don't. I don't understand your, the meaning of your question. How this plan differs from? Well, you're proposing that there be a whole regimen for reporting out and uh, benchmarks, uh, spending numbers, and number of staff, number of approved amendments, number of rejected amendments, etc., etc., etc. And my point is, isn't this part of the budget process? I mean. You can ask for numbers on anything, really, as part of that budget process. Okay, well, why don't we turn to, um, I know we, each of us has some pretty passionate feelings on all of these things, but uh, no one is more passionate on this one than Selena. And I'll refer to staff as well, because there's some technical aspects of that. So the, the, the proposal is a, is a response to a concern about performance measures. And I think uh, one of the things I, I quite admire about the plan is that it's committed to taking a look at outcomes. Are we achieving the goals we set out to achieve? And I think that's 
really critical to understanding where, where, where our strengths lie, where our challenges lie, and I'm, and I'm pleased to see that as a, as a real strong part of the plan. What it hasn't done is how has our management of the plan um, um, and provided a, a reflexive opportunity about the, the plan itself. So for example, if there are dozens and dozens of requests for amendments that come forward, where does that get noted as part of the performance measures of the plan itself? So it's not just about a budget piece, it's part of it, um, but it's more speaks to the effectiveness of the plan um, overall in, a, in, in, um, in, in making sure that it, it does what we say it's going to do. So it's the stuff that's devoted to, the way I look at it, if there's no request for any amendments over the next five years, then I think it's a pretty good plan. But if there are 12 or 15 amendments, then maybe there's something that ought to be tweaked that might, we might want to consider as a trigger for doing a review. And so there isn't a place in here that takes a look at that. I also think it's an accountability piece. Um, are we doing it efficiently? Is it, is it uh, right now it, what we understand, what we've heard, because we've asked the question before, is that there's no expectation for it to cost anything extra. But if there are dozens of requests for amendments, then the co I would imagine that the costs would go up, the, you know, just managing the plan. Well, I think that needs some consideration because we don't want to be spending taxpayer dollars uh, frivolously, and I think we ought to be uh, monitoring that closely. So um, this is just, again, as a proposal, these are the kinds of things we may want to look at. That certainly is up you know, for discussion, but we want to have some opportunity to take a look at how are we doing? What are the benchmarks for, right. for it? But is it more important to have it for this plan than the solid waste plan, the liquid waste plan, the air quality plan, the drinking water plan? I mean, I'm just wondering, uh, not to detract from the point, I mean, this is a very important document, but they all are. And I'm just wondering why we're not giving equal treatment to all. Well, I would suggest, and actually, that you, you actually do do them. There should be consistency. <laughs> you should be doing them. <laughs> it's all the plans. Well, but this is the one that I'm most familiar with. Jim, I, I don't know. Jim, I think, wanted to speak further to that. And then maybe, Malcolm, you've got. Uh, just very briefly, Director Cody. <clears throat> right now, Metro does an annual report um, for the regional plan. Right. And so what we're just saying is <clears throat> add another section in there looking at the administration of the plan. It's the, you know, it's the measures of effectiveness and efficiency. It's not developing a whole new reporting system. You have that in place right now. But what if, what if there were an agreement to provide this information on an annual basis, but it's not part of the growth strategy? Because we've talked about the difficulty of putting it right into the strategy. So, I mean, wouldn't that accomplish the same things? Sorry, there. Sorry, we talked about the difficulty of including it in the plan. I, I don't, I don't remember. Well, your your proposal is to put it into the growth strategy, right? Yes. And, and I've talked difficult. I talked previously about the difficulties we have, given when these well, the requests. Concern, the yes. Concerns you have. Okay. Well, the the concerns you have, given when these are being brought up, and we have approval of 23 or 24. Mm -hmm. So so what I'm saying is, doesn't that give you the information you're going to want? If, if it's adopted as a policy of the Metro Vancouver? I'm I mean, gonna, I'm gonna make sure I understand what yeah. you're, I'm not quite sure I understand. I think you're saying, I think you're partly saying, um, Malcolm, that it can be, that the, these performance measures can be located and guaranteed in something outside of the RGS document itself. Oh. Yeah. And if that's in fact achievable, does that satisfy the concern that gave rise to this? I think even, maybe Malcolm said, I don't wanna speak out of term, a, a legitimate. Um, I would certainly be willing to consider that. All right. Well, then maybe uh, I'll ask Johnny if he's got any comments, but maybe what we should do for the next time is to come back with yeah. what that would look like. Would it be an MOU? Would it be a board resolution? Would it be, you know, just what would it be? Excuse me. Okay, I think Lois. Something yeah. here as a, as a one person. We go into budget discussions. We go into budget discussions. Uh, the budget goes to planning. In this case, this would be planning, regional planning. They stipulate how much time they need for everything they're going to do that year and how much it's going to cost and how many people will work on these projects. At the bottom line, that's the budget for the year. We go halfway through the year and we see where we are. Are we on target? Are we over budget? Are we under budget? Have we got this almost finished? Have we not? And at the end of the year, 
we look and see how we've done. That's the per performance measure, efficiency, and analysis that is regularly done for everything we do here. And it starts with the preliminary budgets and it goes right through to the annual budget at the end of the year. So I'm not sure that it's needed in this plan because it's already being done. Well, yeah, please been, go ahead. Um, much of the information that is requested here would already be provided one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, you correct me if you think if I'm inaccurate. I think it goes farther in some ways than some of the things we would have. Well, you know, the number of rejected amendments to the plan. You know, we probably don't do that. You know, so we can go through and we can see what it is we need to do. Some of it would already be in process. We'd have to add a few things, and and uh, staff can make suggestions for how we can. Uh, kind of document and formalize that in some way through a board resolution or something. You want to go, go, go quick. Well, that's fine. Well, not, not I, I just want to say what we're doing. Not entirely okay. is the point. Okay. Yeah, and it's you're thinking that it's not entirely there. There's some stuff that's there and maybe goes further. Some stuff that maybe is not there that could be built in somehow, yeah. I think you're saying. And there's there's opportunity for that. And there's two or three. Uh, I think May wanted to say something. Richard wanted to say something. And I don't know, Jim, did, did you get enough ore in this water? You're good? Um, I think it's not, not good, but I got okay. It. <laughs> not good. Um, May, do you, uh, Mayor Richard? I, I just, I just want to acknowledge what you're saying, and I'm sifting it through the old brain power here about doing it outside the plan. I'm trying to, you know, weigh this stuff. Would that include, and, and something that I've been sort of remiss on, perhaps, or maybe I didn't get it. Um, with respect to this regional growth strategy, as it does have other people that are interested in it, and obviously the UDI, the port, TransLink, people like that, will we get copied out on um, things that they would say, um, gee, we think this is a great plan, it's working well for us? Uh, those are the things I want to know. Along, I, I guess where we're coming from is, is the costs well, I don't mean now, I mean when the plan gets working. I'm just asking if there were other outside people commenting on how the plan was working or affecting them in any way, would we all get copied as, as, as signatories to the agreement on that? Well, I think it's outside what you list here. It is. I, but, it was just something, Malcolm, I'm trying to sift through this but, and come to a resolution. But if I could ask Johnny, I think that that's the kind of thing that gets added on is correspondence for information to the agendas of the regional, uh, uh, regional planning committee? Um, yeah, those, those kind of comments uh, <clears throat> regularly go through our regional planning committee and can be distributed. Yeah. Um, we are committed to doing an annual review, an annual uh, report yeah. on the regional growth strategy. And uh, That's the, the, kind the, of thing the I... format of that is, I mean, we've got a load of performance measures in the plan. And what I'm hearing is some additional performance measures and maybe some commentary should be added to that. And exactly. but that's, if I mean that's something we can adjust Just in terms of what we can make. Thank, yeah. Thank you very much. All right. So those those are my questions that I have, and I'm going to. Yeah. I think we're going to Johnny now. And Richard, I think one. Sorry, if okay. I could, Jimmy, I, I just want to be real clear on that. Uh, Sorry, Richard's line. getting. <laughs> I, I don't mean to interrupt with my, my mayor, but just want to be real clear. What, what did Johnny just say? What what I'm saying is we produce an annual report on the regional growth strategy, and as has been pointed out, we also do a, a report in our budget process, both of which are public, and outside, without amending the regional growth strategy itself, we can amend those other processes to include the concerns you've, you've raised. Is that, Jim? I've got, that's, that's clear? Yeah. Possibility there, potential. Uh, Richard. Did you have any more interruptions, Jim? Go ahead, start speaking. <laughs> um, uh, I just wanted to say that we're not, in our document here and in our proposal, we're not alleging that uh, Metro Vancouver doesn't do a good job of budgeting, and we're not—that's not the implication the word is to be drawn from this. Um, this is about—is is this plan a cost-effective way of achieving? Is it cost-effectively achieving its results? Is it effectively achieving its results? Is there it, are there performance measures that can indicate that a problem exists in the way in which certain 
elements of regional planning are being done. Not certain budgetary elements necessarily, but a whole bunch of other elements. And so I, um, I just want to make it clear that uh, City of Coquitlam is is uh, is suggesting an improvement, not so much a, uh, uh, a suggesting a gap that exists now, but rather in a way in which the performance measures can be brought. I actually truly appreciate uh, Selena. Um, contribution that she brings to each one of the processes in Coquitlam because she raises this all the time and when she first started it was quite irritating uh, to be blunt um, and it's still irritating but it's mo most often produces a better result for the policy that we're working on because that's that's a strong part of her that's a strong part of her background and so I, uh, I recognize that now there seems to be a commitment from Metro that we will work on a process that will assure Coquitlam that a that these in this information will be gathered and reported on in to the extent that it you know already isn't um, any of it that, are, that isn't already and that we'll come to an agreement as to how that process will unfold we'll, that, we'll see what we can provide and it will be outside an amendment to the growth strategy the, no fair enough we, yeah. we the proposal that we put forward was an amendment to the growth strategy um, we're, we're perfectly comfortable with some other outside process, an ancillary process that can't be unilaterally amended or anything like that, but something that, that will satisfy both parties. What we can do. Okay. Okay. Thank That's you. your first agreement. Congratulations. Um, okay. Um, let's all go home. No, um, I think Johnny's got s some questions more, maybe they're more staff related, I'm not sure, but let's, let's keep the momentum going and, uh, yeah, go for it. And I guess, um, uh, because these are technical, Jim, I'm going to be throwing them your way. Yeah. Jim? Okay. <laughs> I'm here, Johnny. All right. <laughs> and maybe I should start out by saying if they ever catch those scoundrels who did all the damage last night, the punishment should be to come and listen to a <laughs> debate between the planners on the technical aspects of the regional growth stretch. Yeah, yeah, right. Surely there's some human rights issues. <laughs> yeah. Um, the first one I, I want to tackle really goes to the heart of what May was saying earlier, and that is the whole concern. I think that this um, plan intrudes too much uh, has, uh, has, has uh, your, your first concern, that this is a too big an intervention, it's got too much scope, too much detail. Transfers almost. political power. Transfer of political <coughs> power. Thank you. <coughs> so I want to ask some questions because I, 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 the, the legislation is, is complex. The legislation isn't used very much. It only comes into play when people are uh, submitting regional context statements or revising them. And so there isn't a lot of familiarity with it. And so I want to make sure that we may have different perspectives on, on what that is. And I want to just clarify that to, uh, to make sure that that's the case. because. Your Coquitlam submission spoke of scope, level of detail. A regional district that lacks direct political accountability should not be the gatekeeper to changes affecting local decisions that have historically been decided by local municipalities. Top-down approaches in regional planning are undesirable. Significant powers are voluntarily transferred to, to Metro Vancouver. And so it's that kind of line of, of thinking that appears to be coloring a lot of these proposals, that, that, that that's what you're thinking. So I, I, I just want to make sure that we, we understand each other. And I guess the, f the first thing that I, I'll, I'll just throw this away, I suggest you do too, uh, the whole question of the regional district lacking direct political accountability, that's the system we've got. And whether we like it or not, that's the system we've got for water or sewer or, or, or whatever. We have this indirect election system. Uh, and, and, and we deal with other things of equal importance, and we're not going to undo that. And this is, I mean, if we want to discuss someday whether direct elections are a good, a good idea or a bad idea, then Coquitlam's free to do that. But this isn't, this isn't the process where we can, we can deal with that. So I want to deal with what the legislation is and what it isn't. And, and the first question is the reference to top-down approach to regional planning. Now. That's referred to in your Coquitlam brief, page, uh, where is it? Page five of your brief. And that's specifically the context of the legislation that occurred prior to 1983. Correct, Jim? That's the reference you're making in that little indent. 
Um, on page five. Yeah, I, I was not at a planning school in 1983, Johnny, so I, I, I'm not familiar with the legislation. Well, what we're referring to there, though, is um, regional planning in BC has gone through cycles. And uh, uh, for the regional districts, it was an authority that was there before. I'm not familiar with what that previous um, structure or regime was like. It was, I, I understand it was a little more um, centralized or top down. And uh, whether it was a, a, a you know, the municipalities in their planning, their land use planning, were compelled to get in line with that. Um, it, at some point in the 80s, uh, um, there was a decision made by the provincial government to remove that, that <coughs> regional planning authority. Um, that, that direct sort of uh, top-down approach. And so we were just mentioning that that's, <clears throat> we're citing that from the, uh, the ministry's own explanatory guide. Yeah. So prior to 1983, <clears throat> the system was what we call a strict compliance model. The region had developed a plan, and the municipality's plan had to comply with it. Game over, period. So that was top-down. And it went in 1983 after the Spetty Four debate in, in Delta, that's what brought it down. So that's not what's being, that's not the framework that's in place today. And that is not the framework that is being proposed, if we understand that. Fair enough. I think there's a lot we agree on here. Well, um, if I can just respond on that point. Uh, yeah, if uh, precisely comparison between the pre-83 regional planning regime and the 2011, yeah, they're, 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 they're different. Okay. But it is the approach to preparing the plan. I guess um, it doesn't come out clearly enough here in the brief, but the legislation, the LGA, is enabling. <coughs> Just the same way there's sections of the LGA that enable us to do our, our official community plans, our, our local planning. It, it's not directive or doesn't stipulate you need to go to this level of detail or that level of control. It's left for, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, local government, for the, the council or the board to decide what is that appropriate balance. So <clears throat> um, our, our contention here is that um, certainly compared to the LRSP, the proposed RGS is more of a, of a controlling, more detailed plan. So stay with me here, Jim. And, and I, sh I should have I should have probably uh, started out just to, to, to acknowledge right off. We agree that regional planning is a good thing. I mean, Coquitlam is still, you, you're agreeing. Our first two paragraphs are all. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you've actually agreed that the goals set out in this plan, I forget what your word was, Selena, but it was such a nice word, I should have remembered it. It was, it was wonderful or fabulous or something like that. I, laudable. Laudable, word, whatever. <laughs> So we've got that level of agreement, and and we're not dealing with the with the pre-1983 framework. From 1983 to 1995, there was no framework at all. The province had thrown out regional planning, thrown it out. There was no authority for the region to do regional planning at all, and so this was the this was the autonomy. This was the the golden days of municipal autonomy. You could do whatever you want. Correct? Um, during that time, I had started my career. I worked in the interior. Uh, some were regional district clients. Um, they did um, uh, some planning. I think it was official settlement plans. There was zoning. It was in the electoral areas where there was uh, assent to do that. There was <coughs> coordination and communication with the municipalities, but there weren't like over, it certainly wasn't the regional growth strategy level of yeah, planning. There were no regional growth strategies. Yeah, regional districts did planning for unincorporated areas, but there was, there was no authority to do a regional plan, and therefore municipalities had autonomy. In 1995, the current regime was established, and that has, is, if you like, neither top down nor autonomy. It's a system where the assignment of responsibilities are the region does a plan, and then the municipalities get to accept it or not. The local municipalities do their official community plans. Okay. The region has no say in that. And then there's a regional context statement embedded in the OCP, which the municipality first approves and then is submitted to the region for acceptance or non-acceptance. That's the framework of the current legislation. Agreed? Agreed to the extent that that describes sort of the relationship and structure. 
it doesn't doesn't direct the process or um, you know, how those plans are prepared. No, agreed. And I'll come to scope and uh, and detail. I, I you know, that that's where I think you're at. But I just wanted to be clear that that legal framework. Now the LRSP was developed in those halcyon days of no regional planning. So the LRSP was developed when there was no authority to do any plan. So it has no implementation section. There's nothing about regional context statements or compliance or anything in there. It was developed as a voluntary document. It may have been later sanctified as a regional as a, as a regional growth strategy. But the, but the framework that we have got in the legislation since 1995 <coughs> is the framework which this regional growth strategy is developed under. And this regional growth strategy doesn't propose to change any of that allocation of duties and responsibilities, notwithstanding the issues about scope and detail. I just want to make sure that we are all clear that we are not saying we're going to come in and do your OCPs, or we're going to come in and do your development permits, or we're going to come in and, and ratify your local decision making. The nexus of our uh, of our relationship is still the regional context statement. Great. Hey, do you want to? Well, I, go I was ahead. just going to say, wouldn't it be except for the voting? <clears throat> the, the voting powers could change that, correct? I mean, you—they have their legislation. We, uh, I'm very bluntly, you were given legislation. The cities were given legislation, mm -hmm. and. I feel that some of our le our legislation that we were giving, some of the powers under that legislation, notwithstanding we do all our own plans, is being usurped somehow by Metro with this document. And, and, I'm, and I'll leave that. And I, I, I understand that's your concern. Okay. All right. And I, uh, that's why I'm trying to go through the legislation to try and address gotcha. that concern and allay that concern if I can. All right. So the the situation is still. You will develop your OCP. You will develop a regional context statement. And that's the first time we enter the scene is to accept that regional context statement or not. And if there's a dispute, we've got a dispute resolution. As is the current structure. With right. When the LRSP came in, um, shortly thereafter, uh, we got into having to prepare regional context statements. And we had fun with that in Port Moody. Um, so we have that now. And we have that, that connection between our our municipal planning, our OCPs, the LRSP, to that regional context statement. So, same legislation, same structure, yep. different plan. Different plan, <laughs> which I'll get to. But under, under that same legislative framework, when Delta, for example, wanted to change a parcel of land, which was previously green zone, mm -hmm. to an urban use, yes. they first came to the region and asked to amend the plan and change their regional context statement. That's under the existing regime and it's the LRSP. There was a change. <coughs> so I'm saying that, that, that nothing has changed in that process in terms of the actual process. I'll deal with scope and detail in a minute. Yeah. <coughs> um, changes in scope. Yeah, I, I, I haven't followed all the happenings around the region on that, but I think at one point, it might have been the, the Maple Ridge situation, mm -hmm. where a proposal to change green zone lands actually triggered back an amendment to the legislation, so you got away from that 100% um, right. approval rating. So the, the legislation actually was was refined to better reflect, a, I guess, a more adaptive, realistic regional plan. Yeah. yeah, what the legislation did was previously had had those applications come through, the board, not only did the board have to deal with it, but every other municipality in the Lower Mainland had to deal with it. So the, 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 the legislation changed that. But they, so we're still operating in that structural framework where you do your OCPs, you do the regional context statement, we get to accept or not the regional context statement, and then it's dispute if we disagree. And there's no <coughs> structural change. We're not changing that balance or allocation of responsibilities. Scope, scope change. We, the, the scope of the, of the regional growth strategy is broader than that of the Livable Region Strategic Plan. No question. All right. And the reason it's broader is to address some issues 
that were not successfully addressed in the Liverpool Regional Strategic Plan. Mm -hmm. Things like the dispersal of employment, the erosion of industrial land, and the consequences that had <coughs> on things like the economics of Translink, congestion on the roads, the state of the regional economy, climate change, all of those things. And those are expressed, that change in scope is expressed in the addition of new goals to the plan. And I think you'll find in our <clears throat> in all the staff reports, um, we have noted that as sort of a, a statement of fact, uh, having been fairly closely involved with the preparation of the RGS. I'm well aware of that. Um, so we just were wanting to advise council. There is that fact. We weren't commenting whether that was good or bad, just for them to recognize that. My reading, correct me if I'm wrong, is that in terms of the approval of that widened scope, those goals, those new goals, is not 23 out of 24, it's actually 24 out of 24, that you actually endorsed those goals. You said you believed in the industrial land policy and you believed in the goals that we put forward in the, in the plan. I, I, I haven't seen anything in your in Coquitlam's submission that said, I, I really don't like that goal because you've never done that before and you should get out of here. It, there's, there's, there's the, the, the scope the, in terms of the number of goals we've got on the table and the nature of the goals that we've got in the plan, I've heard Coquitlam as well as the other 23 affected municipalities say, <coughs> they're good goals. Uh, on that point, Johnny, and, and I may all let some of the uh, elected officials speak for that. Um, the goals, it's almost motherhood. Um, it, it's, it's hard not to support them. I think, that, but it's against a backdrop of, as Councillor Reid had said, this, this plan just seems to be um, more detailed, more controlling. So, yeah, on one hand, we all can aspire to those goals, but we're just worried about how that is being delivered and being mandated. So, it, it's. Uh, I think it's more of a perspective of council around It's more thou shall do something than thou might do something. Okay. It, it's more prescriptive. And, and I understand because the LRSB wasn't. But it also, and we'll also stipulate that you know, our objections are listed. The things we haven't objected to aren't listed. But that's one of them. We didn't object to that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we, we, we subscribe to the goals. We accept them as appropriate goals. Now, given the fact, of course, that as everyone around the table, all the elected officials around the table recognize, perhaps based on who the other Coquitlam representative is at the Metro Vancouver board, that, Metro, that Coquitlam's perspective is a diverse perspective. Mm -hmm. And that there, there might be different points of view on that subject as to whether Metro Vancouver can be trusted with any thing other than yeah. water. And I think there's some question about water. The one. That's the, uh, that's among, among. <laughs> oh, sorry, that caused, caused a stir. My deep apologies, <laughs> Chair of the Water. <laughs> um, there, there are some members, there is a member, as you know, who raises that question quite, quite often. But we, that's not our objection. Our objection is whether this adequately balances that increased scope with perhaps some mechanisms to ensure that the people that got elected to do certain things within a municipality can still function. Yeah. Um, I understood the, one of the first things I learned as a professional planner was when people talked about the community perspective, they really were naive. There isn't such a thing as a community perspective. There's always <coughs> lots of perspectives in the community. So I totally understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. But the, the point I was raising here that the legislative framework hasn't changed and the expansion of scope at the goal level has been embraced by every community in this, in this, in this, in this region, including Coquitlam. And it's the detail of the administration that we, we need to talk to. And I want to get to that because I actually think that's the fundamental core of the difference in perspectives we have on what this legislation actually means. And that I, I just want to explore with you, Jim, uh, perhaps a slightly different perspective uh, that will maybe hopefully allay some of your concerns. And that's on, on the we, detail. 
the detail in the plan. And you made the point in your perspective of, of it goes down to the pixel or, or whatever. Well, whatever. it's interesting. I mean, there's a fair bit of education and historical stuff and interesting planning stuff that some people are riveted by, others are <laughs> less so. Um, and then there's questions and answers and clarity. And I appreciate there's a laying of concerns that I think some of the motivation there. Um, so I, I just want to check in with everybody that we're, we're shifting around a little bit with in terms of some education, ensuring that, that concerns are allayed vis-a-vis getting clarity on questions that are unanswered. I don't know if this is going to hit proposal number one at some point, um, and I, I think it will too. I think it's leading there. We're getting there. Okay, and I'm not trying to rush everybody, but I, I, do, I am conscious of the time, and I am conscious that no, no other participating local governments have had a chance to say a word. And, okay. And, 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 well, and I it's will... clear that the planners in the room find this very fascinating. Well, I find it. <laughs> I, 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 good. It's, keep going. I, I warned that this was cruel and unusual punishment for others, but very but, good. but I, I will indicate to the to the chair that this line of questioning is 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 not short. I want to uh, I want to be really clear on some things. I want to understand Coquitlam's position. And I want to understand, I want equally, I want to, through those questions, see it layer by layer. So bear with me if you would. I, so, sorry, Jim. If, yeah. if I could, Jimmy, I just, if we watch the clock, because, and, and I don't mind this, this is very interesting, Johnny. Um, and I'm glad to see this being educational for some. Um, but also, I, I think we need to turn our minds to, to where we're going from here. I thought I heard Director Brody say at one point the possibility of a next meeting, if that's on the books, because this is, this is all we're scheduled for. And I suspect that, that discussion, that point of uh, discussion will probably take at least half an hour. So I, I, I don't mind if we... And if you could give us your questions in writing, we will give you answers. No, we found that not very helpful. So, um, so, so you probably have about another half an hour, 35 minutes to continue questions and clarity and, and, and education, and then towards the last 10 minutes, determine where do you go from here. Sorry. Have, 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 so I, I'll... I'll sorry. Okay. Can I sorry, Richard wants to say I'll, something. A quick clarification. Yeah. We found that not very helpful. I don't think you've ever submitted your questions in writing, have you? Uh, well, what I'm referring to is, um, and you've, you've referred it, we're going to take up even more time here, but, but you've referred several times to the letter I wrote in, in October to say, uh, and I thank you for it, how, how clearly I had captured your concerns. Mm. Uh, what you didn't say was, for every one of those concerns in that letter, I did provide an attempt at an explanation and a response. And your counsel then referred that letter for a legal review and a possible further uh, response. And we didn't hear anything from you again, other than a phone call where we added, actually from Jim, where we actually added a clause until your objections and proposals came forward. So this exchange of letters doesn't seem to work for us very well. And the purpose of this was let's have a face-to-face -face and work our way through it. And I and I appreciate because we've lost okay. about five minutes in this list, a little discussion that I carry on. So we got to the point where we agree that we're not shifting the legal framework, and we agree that the scope in terms of the breadth of goals is one that we all subscribe to. The concern is is this is there some level of detail here that is a problem? And you said, yeah, the, even reflected in the pixels, the fact that we get down a property by property designation. And I'm going to suggest to you that, that because of that designation, people are starting to think that this is a pre-1983 kind of uh, relationship. If it, was a, if it was a full compliance model, like pre-1983, you would have a concern about the level of detail, but the level of detail reflects increased level of control. But in this framework, I'm going to try and take you through an example and see if whether you agree with it, Jim, to show that the actual increase in detail works for you, not against you, because of the way this legislation works. So if I could, let's take the industrial policy because we seem to be all interested in that. We all agree with the industrial policy, the goal of conserving some land for industrial use for the economy of the region. If that's all we said in the, in the plan, I'm going to take you through three levels of detail. If that's all we said, the least level of detail, when you came forward under the, under the regional context statement system that we've got in this, when you come forward with your regional context statement, the board can accept or not accept. 
and the board can say, the objective is to conserve industrial land. I'm sorry, your map of industry isn't good enough. You haven't, you haven't conserved enough industry. I'm going to turn it down. And we will go to eventually to an arbitrator, and the plan wouldn't have provided any help to the, to the region or the municipality or the arbitrator to give them any guidance on what the appropriate answer would be. It's wide open. And in fact, the amount of time and effort we, we would, you and I would have to go into to prepare our cases with no guidance provided in the, in the plan would be considerable. You'd have to argue <coughs> that you've provided enough industry. I'd have to argue you've provided not enough. Lord knows what research and reports would have to do. Okay. Right? So that doesn't work for either of us. That leaves this discretion, too much regional, regional discretion, to, to make a decision, and then the arbitrators, you, you, the municipality would take its chances, whether, they, whether we could persuade the arbitrator or you could. Let's go to a second layer, one close to Mayor Stewart's heart. We have, the, we have the goal, and we have a set of principles and criteria that you've advocated for. And supposing we just have that in the plan. Right. Then you've got a little bit more comfort that if you followed those criteria and principles in your regional context statement, and we say we don't accept that, if we go to an arbitrator, you at least have got a little bit more to hang your hat on. You can say, look, here are the principles and here's the criteria Metro's got in their plan. I think, I think it's reasonable. You've got something more to involve. So an increase, an increase in content helps you. Would you agree on that? That, that, that this level two is better for you than level one? <coughs> I, I can see where you're going with this, Johnny. And actually, uh, I, no, I, when you put it that way, I feel uncomfortable. Because um, let, let's, um, and I don't want to break up your flow, but let's just be clear on a couple of things. One of the goals in the LRSP, or the RGS, support a sustainable economy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the goals we're in support of. <coughs> and what, and again, this is a, a, a real case in point of a difference between the RGS and the LRSP. So it then takes that goal, drills into a strategy, and the strategies now are a little more um, specific and, and probably helpful. Mm -hmm. And here we get into strategy 2.2, protect the supply of industrial land. And under that strategy, there are basically policies where there's a role for, for metro, role for local government, as we, we agree on, it's the regional context statement that binds us. So, um, In a case, say, like uh, Fraser Mills, uh, that application has come forward now under the, uh, the regional growth strategy. <clears throat> it would be found to be inconsistent with that strategy, and um, it would probably be rejected, and we would be into a dispute resolution process. So, so that's the difference. You know, like I said, it's a, a crystal clear example difference between <coughs> LRSP, RGS, and you know, the, the connection between lofty goals, more specific strategies, and, and actually quite detailed policies, coupled with a pixel parcel-based map. It's beautiful. Thanks, Jim. That's exactly, exactly my view, too. Under the Livable Region Strategic Plan, had we had an objective to have a sustainable economy, and I think we all think we should have, and if we had within that an objective to preserve industrial land, and everybody tells us we should have because we're running out of it, then under the LRSP, would have evaluated your regional context statement, and even with criteria and principles, we might have said, Fraser Mills? Nope. nope. Know your local arguments, face of Mallardville or, or whatever, but nope. Doesn't meet the principles, doesn't meet the criteria. We're going to reject it. Okay. So even though we've gone from level one, which had no criteria and principles, to level two, which now adds some criteria and principles, and that gives you some comfort, in the case of a thing like Fraser Mills, you would still be vulnerable. You'd still be vulnerable to the, to the region saying, that doesn't meet the principles and criteria we laid out in the plan, so I'm going to reject your regional context statement, and I'm going to take you to arbitration, and I'm going to argue to the arbitrator that you made a bad decision and that was contrary to principles, and, and you're going to have to argue the contrary, and the arbitrator gets to decide. 
what I'm going to suggest, and you know what I'm going to suggest next, is by agreeing to a map, a detailed map, in the plan, property by property, and the boundaries are ones we negotiated with everybody so that you agreed with the boundaries, and we, we gave up a lot of stuff that we didn't want to give up to do that, but that's another story. That's across the region. Well, across the region, all right? <coughs> but Fraser Mills is now identified as urban. It's in, the, it's in the regional growth strategy plan as urban. So when you come with your regional context statement and say, here's our regional context statement, if we want to reject your regional context statement and say, you know, Fraser Mills really should be industrial, you know. It meets all the principles and all the criteria and all, yeah, really, it's still industrial land. You haven't developed it yet. Turn it back. You can wave that map in front of the arbitrator and say, no, 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 no. They've set out in the plan. They've given us some insurance policy on Fraser Mills. They've identified it as urban, and now they're trying to welch on the deal and go back. So that detail map sets out the expectations. Now, it only asks for general consistency, and the, and the plan allows some minor changes here and there, sets out what that process is, but it gives you an insurance policy that what you negotiated with the region that went into that map is the basis on which we'll evaluate your regional context statement. And if you're close to that, we're going to have one hell of a time trying to persuade an arbitrator you are wrong. Whereas if we took that detail out, well, the field's mine. But we're not arguing that. No, we're not. <clears throat> and and you, know, you, you, you put it that way, and yes, that, that map cuts both ways. It, it sort of, it's an obligation, and it binds the board that uh, uh, if the regional context statement was to be rejected that was consistent with that map, uh, that would obviously be a, a difficult position for the region to be in. Um, anyways, I'll let you continue okay. with your line of questions. But, but, I think Richard but, has but, but it all, you know, and, and the map does then, say, and Fraser Mills might be a good example because it was rezoned mm -hmm. uh, long before this process. Um, uh, but there are other examples. For example, there are lots of industrial areas uh, west of us that uh, have been removed uh, already uh, and have been converted from industrial to other uses, some that are planned to be converted from industrial to others, some that are currently in, in very in intensive industrial uses and currently show on the map as something else, um, even though you know the, no one could argue that they're not in enormously industrial. I mean, uh, uh, Fraser Mills wasn't even an operating mill anymore. It was a, a storage area for gravel. Um, but uh, so I, it, it, while it cuts both ways, it also freezes to some degree. And I think that might be one of the challenges that a lot of the groups around have, is that it freezes in uh, that moment in time, the land use decisions that this council has made and the councils around the region have made. and. <coughs> And going back to the measure of consistency, it also freezes the inconsistency uh, to the extent that there is inconsistency, and we, we both recognize that there's enormous inconsistencies. So, I, and I didn't want to interrupt you, but I did want to make those two points: that, that we, the freezing and the measure of inconsistency that we ended up in there. We'll get to the consistency. I promise you. I know you. On. I, I expect uh, you will. Yeah. Okay. So now we've got this level of detail that gives you some security about what we would expect in the regional context statement. And the notion has been somehow put about, and I may be anticipating this, this measure on, on performance and costs and bureaucracy, you know, the, the idea there's layers of bureaucracy and we'll have floods of applications coming to us and all the rest of it. So I think we need to be clear on what would come to the region under this system with that map in place. So. It's right, is it not, Jim? No building or development permit consistent with local zoning will come to the region. And that's absolutely crystal clear. Entirely within the local or the municipal zone. Entirely municipal. No rezoning application that is consistent with your local OCP will come to the region. That too is correct. Absolutely correct. Good. No, even no local OCP amendment would come to the region if it is consistent with your regional context statement. That's correct, because that's the trigger. It's when that's the, the OCP amendment is inconsistent with the, uh, 
RCS. And even OCP amendments that are not consistent with your regional context statement, but are small enough in scale to be exempted under the provisions that you helped worked out in that TAC working group, they wouldn't come to the region. That was the added flexibility we secured. That's it. <coughs> you did well. So what are we left with? We're only left with those amendments to the OCP. These are the only things that could come to the region. OCP amendments of sufficient scale to be bigger than that exemption clause. In other words, sufficient scale to trigger an amendment to the regional context statement because they could potentially undermine one of the RGS goals or strategies. Only those will come to the region. Yes or no? That, that's correct. OCP amendments inconsistent with the regional context statement need to be considered. It, it, it's, it's not just hung up or, or triggered by it's, it's, it's uh, contrary to a goal. Because again, there's, there's strategies, there's policies, there's mapping. So there's the, the, if, if you will, the, the net, if you look, uh, consider the uh, LRSP as a net wide grid. RGS, the same net, much narrower grid. So there's, there's more that's being dealt with here. So it, it could be potentially more that comes forward as OCP amendments inconsistent with the RCS but then need to go to but, but, the region. But the, the finer net is actually just the inclusion of new policies that we all agreed the new scope is what we want to deal with. We want to conserve it. There was no industrial land designated in the LRSP because nobody cared about it. Now we care about it. And there was no explicit thing about, you know, send your density to the, to the town centers and the transit development areas because everybody assumed that you would. And it didn't happen. 50% of it went elsewhere. 50% went elsewhere. And that's why we put these policies in. So we, we agreed on the additional scope. We've agreed on the policies. We've put a map in that gives you some level of assurance. And the only thing, the only thing that comes to the region is an application that would change those designations on a sufficiently large scale that it escapes those exemptions. And so those would come to the region as part of a change in the regional context. It doesn't mean they're necessarily rejected. They come for a process to discuss whether that's fair enough. But that's changes over the next 30 years. Mm -hmm. Start somewhere. You start somewhere. Okay, we'll get to the amendments. We'll so get to that's a long right? time for me to lock into the not, plan that I have now. No, but you're not locked in. This is, this is, this is, this is what I want to try and allay your concerns. You come in, and what it, all this does is say, now, out of all those massive amount of, of planning stuff you deal with, permits, rezonings, OCP amendments, the whole bit, the only thing that comes to the region is something of big enough scale that we say, whoa, hey, that's contrary to, contrary to what we put in the plan. And it's big enough that it needs a discussion. So you come forward <coughs> with that. And so if there are any increase in costs and bureaucracy, that increase in costs and bureaucracy will be directly proportional to the number of development proposals that the municipalities sent to the region, which are in significant violation of the plan and challenge the achievement of our goals. If, if, if what we've done, if we've done our homework well, right now, at least for the next few years, the boundaries we all negotiated should for the most part be okay. There's always a later new clause comes along. There might be one or two. But if, we, if a municipality is sending us 10 or 15 applications to change their boundaries in a year that, that really undermine, then we have a problem. Yeah. Johnny, yes, it's I not, think. And we should have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. But what you describe is, is, is a bit of a leap of faith. And there's an unease in Coquitlam in, in moving into a plan that has that fine grid net, that has that policy detail in there. Um, and I know through the working group, and sometimes you're there participating in those discussions, and, and we went through, you know, line by line, try to you know, understand it and, 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 and uh, get the consensus. Um, there, there continues to be unease and equipment around this. So this is why we came forward. This was staff's 
recommendation to council as a, as a means to address that ob that objection. But but what I'm what I'm what I'm asking you, Jim, is if we backed away from that level of detail, how would how would you have a policy? If we backed away from the level of detail and said, yes, we support the sustainable economy. Yes, we support conserving industrial land, but we don't want to say how we're going to do it. The legislation says you're going to do it in your regional context statement. You're going to do it. You've got to demonstrate how your plan matches up with the policies. And if we don't provide you with any guidance, if we don't provide you with any guidance in the thing, then, then the field's open. We've got to argue those from scratch every time you submit a regional context statement. And, and what we're saying here is that um, and actually, it parallels. We all get hung up on, on the uh, percentages again. Um, but just the same way <coughs> the Type 2 minor amendment, it set a higher bar for green zone changes. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, the region agrees with that. So, so I guess by inference then, the degree of regional significance is greater right. around that. Mm -hmm. And so you know, it, it takes that, that higher threshold, two-thirds, to override that, to make that sort of change. Um, so what we're suggesting here is where um, the municipality feels strongly, as expressed by its council, you know, setting a high bar for itself to bring forward that proposed uh, regional context amendment, it should equally require a, that high bar to ensure that we are either consistent or inconsistent with what is regional significance. So we're just wanting to push that, you know, because there, there's a lack of understanding around regional yeah, significance. So it's... the same way that you've done with the green zone, yeah, we're, we're, we're you're saying do the same. Yeah, we're, all right. We're well, trying let's, to get a let's, let's let's explore that then. Let's explore that. Um, oh, what you're good. saying is, first of all, your pr your presentation said that this was about small changes. But the, but the actual proposal is for any area of land. Can you just clarify which of those? I'm sorry, I used the wrong word there. I, I, I meant... It, <laughs> you didn't mean small changes after all? No, I meant changes within the urban land use. So it, 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 urban, is, urban land use designations, no. not touching the green zone, not outside the... the no, uh, I, we have the same area. question. I, I, okay. Wrong okay. choice of words, I'm all sorry. All right, I won't hang you on that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you probably already like did. Yeah, you got, stuff. Yeah. We, we already did that, Jim. So, so the proposal is, in fact, for any area of land to change. So if somebody wants to take any area of your industrial land, let's say, and change it to residential, this is what you are saying is the process should apply to that. Is that correct? This, this is what we're putting forward as a way to... Uh, Set the bar high for rejection to make sure that if, it, if it's consistent or inconsistent with regional significance. See, so just that's where you just slid in the variation, because the change in region in green zone is if you want to change the green zone, you've got to get two thirds approval to change it. Yeah. Not two. Not not if you don't get two thirds uh, against you. You're the, the, you get the green no, flag to do whatever it. you we want. We like that. That's good. Right. It's a two thirds approval to change it. Yes. And now what you're saying with, if I want to do the same with industrial land, I don't need two-thirds approval to change it. You're saying I only need one-third approval to change it. You're not raising the bar. You're lowering the bar. Where the application goes forward with a two-thirds support from council. That's where the higher threshold is, you're suggesting? Can you, can, yeah. can you just clarify me, and, uh, is, there, is there any provision in the Act for a start? I think this is an irrelevant detail, but is there any provision in the Act for Metro Vancouver to be able to require a two-thirds vote in a municipal council decision? Is that a legal issue? Does anybody want to weigh in on that? Got the question? If I, if I put it to you, the, the, there isn't. If, if, if we could identify a legally acceptable way of doing that, would you accept it? No, I, I'm, I'm just, okay. if, if, you want to, if you want to impose on yourself a two-thirds majority, that would be my guess. But, but Metro Vancouver is not going to build into its plan no, well, something we can't What we are suggesting do. is only if yeah. a local council approves something by a two-thirds majority uh, would this aspect of the regional plan uh, be, uh, be applicable. Yeah, I, I, I understand yeah. that. I just don't know what the statutory basis for it is. But what you're saying is that when it comes to the to the region, well, let me ask the question: Are you saying if it passes by two thirds majority of the of the council, 
that it's not going to trigger a change to the regional context statement? I've got, a part, I've got a big parcel of industrial land, and I want to change it into waterfront condos. Mm -hmm. right? And so my, my OCP said it was industrial. My regional context data said, said it was industrial. And now I want to change it. And I've got two-thirds support of councillors to change it. What do you say actually happens next? Because I really don't understand this part. That is a regional context statement amendment. That's a regional context statement amendment. And, the, and right away, the, the, the Local Government Act says you change the regional context statement, and that's got to go to the board for acceptance or non-acceptance. Agreed? So you've changed a big parcel of land. You've changed your regional context statement. You've come to the board and say, here's the regional context statement. Will you accept it? And if 49% uh, or 51% say no, you're saying, good, it's accepted. We're setting the bar at two thirds. That's the proposal. Yeah. In other words, you're saying that acceptance, it goes back to the one we went round and yes, round. Yes, we went. Yeah. We did the again. math. So, kind of, you know, just uh, number one, it shouldn't work. <coughs> I don't think you should be looking, if you really are strongly supportive of regional policies and regional plans, I question why you would want to have major large areas of land changed over from one designation to the other with only 33% approval of the board. And then secondly, for what it's worth, I don't think we could anyway. Well, well this really is, uh, is our attempt to identify some way of, of presenting a check and balance um, at the time when, when we believe that uh, the region is uh, expanding its role in this area. And what, what is, this is our attempt at presenting some kind of check and balance. There may be other ways. Uh, this was our attempt to be positive in terms of doing that kind of stuff. We talked about other things, uh, things like uh, the US, U.S. system and going back and forth. So we didn't want to go there. So, uh, so this I, was I, our I just attempt. want to deal There's with the proposal. Of, Peter. of doing it, uh, we're prepared to discuss that. And 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 I'm I'm trying to understand, and I don't want to be argumentative. So please explain it to me, <clears> Jim. <throat> is if we've got a policy, and the des that policy is reflected in the designations in the plan, and you can change those designations with a 50% plus one approval, and now you're saying you want to be able to change those designations with only a 33% approval, how that squares with what you suggested in your presentations on Tuesday, that what you're trying to do is strengthen the plan. It's a peculiar form of strengthening, if you don't mind me saying. It, it's strengthened in the sense that it's um, trying to better balance the uh, control and land use decision making between the regional by and metro. local level. Sorry, May, you said? I said by metro. So uh, again, we're, we're, fo <laughs> we're focusing on the solutions that staff have come up with to the objections that we have. So maybe if we can, and I'll use the word acknowledge again, that our objections, and I don't know what the solutions would be. I really don't. I'm not a planner. I know you don't know that, but I'm not. What, what, I'm, what, what, I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to ask, May, is when you look at the process in place, mm -hmm. virtually nothing comes to the region for this kind of approval. Only larger scale changes of use yeah. Yeah. would come. And 50% plus one doesn't seem an unreasonable bar to persuade the board that you should have that kind of change. And, and your, I presume is your position is it is. But there, there should be few and far between. Because a lot of the flexibility, yeah, a lot of the flexibility we already provided in the, the map you've got. There's a lot of industrial land that was actually designated mixed employment that we argued, gee, that really is industrial land, you know. But you said, no, we want the flexibility. And so we folded and gave you mixed employment. This was, this was an example yeah. that yeah. Jim was using. Yeah. We don't have any of those issues no. in Coquitlam. Selena. It's the, again, it goes back to the document itself. Yeah. So what the pro what the process laid out in the in the in the legislation is, 
if you've got one of these designations, changes, which we've identified in the plan as, and, and, and they're too big to be caught by the exemption clause, then you bring it to the board, either, either as an amendment or, a, or, or a, a, a change to your regional context statement, and there's a discussion. And if you don't get 50% plus one to agree to your regional context statement, you've got access to an arbitrator. And that doesn't seem an unreasonable check and balance, and that is the check and balance that's laid out in the, in the legislation. Yeah. So, and, and, and so it comes back to your proposal number one, still seems to be, and clarify if this is the case, your proposal number one seems to seek to change the checks and balances that are laid out in the legislation. You want to change the proportion, the weight. So it's not 50% plus one to, that you've got to persuade on the board. It's only 33%. Okay. Um, Selena did want to say something. I'm trying to keep order. I don't know if you have an internal just, order. I, You're, just a, a clarification okay. question. Johnny mentioned large-scale uses, which, and I'm still trying to understand what that means and what's the criteria for large-scale uses. Because for me, that's what I kept tripping over when we were first taking a look at this, and it's continued to be a challenge. And some criteria would be helpful, because when I look at this map, different municipalities have used different criteria for determining large-scale uses. And it comes back to our consistency and our regional significance. And so I'd really like to hear very specifically okay. what that means, because I, I, sure. still, I still get tripped up yeah. by that. And this, if I can yeah, respond please. then, respond to yeah. that. That was one of the tests that we gave to Jim and his group to say, okay, give us some criteria here. Give us what, what, should, what should get a free pass here. And 627, A, B, and C gives us the free pass. Okay. So redesignating land from one regional land use designation to another regional land use designation and the aggregate area of redesignation doesn't exceed one hectare, free pass. Don't pass go, don't collect 200 complaints from the regional plan. If you're mixed employment or industrial and you want to redesignate that to general urban, or you're industrial, you want to redesignate from industrial to mixed employment, there are some examples here, there are some criteria, three hectares or less, and depending on how far you are from a, a transit station. And then there's a the third one is the aggregate. If you keep on doing all these small changes, the aggregate of change shouldn't exceed 2% of the municipality's total lands in each, each applicable racial land use. So this is what the professionals, 12 of you, 13 of you, spending all that time have said, okay, this is what we think should get a free pass without triggering a review of whether this is of concern to the region. It's by definition, if you get under this, it's by definition not of concern to the region. No. But this isn't the criteria that was used in designating things. So whatever um, in terms of recreation, conservation, and industrial land, we do have criteria. That, that's, that goes to the framework argument that we we'll come back to. Five and six. What we're talking about here is the degree of control. And we're saying only, only these, only parcels that are bigger than this problem come to the region if it's contrary. And then if it does come to the region on a, on a regional context with an amendment basis, you, you only have to convince 50% plus one to change it. And if you don't convince that, you still got access to a contract. And that's the check and balance that's, that's laid out in the legislation. And most of us would say it's pretty heavily loaded towards the local concern as it is. So I just want to clarify you are, that, that you understand that what you are seeking is a change to the check and balance system that's set out in the legislation so that an amendment to the regional context statement can be accepted by only 30% of That's what you are. Selena, is that helpful in terms of it doesn't fall into what is listed there? It probably qualifies as what you described as large scale. It, 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 it does. The challenge I, I keep coming back to is in terms of how um, you know, we've been working, I think, we've also worked pretty hard to try to 
figure out, and we've had our own struggles about figuring out which lands go where, um, and it comes back to consistency and the, the, the lack of definition of regional significance. And, and um, I'm glad that there's, that there's something in this document um, going forward, but we didn't start out with, um, with, I think, helpful definitions. So what we have is, you know, municipalities that don't have any conservation recreation areas um, so that, you know, there are potentially could be large, significant uh, land use changes that aren't even part of this, and, and I have some concerns about that. Would it help? I was going to go through this one, one uh, objective at a time, but would it help if I skip right to five and six, the consistency and, and regional significance argument? Well, well I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you're, what you're trying to do here, because this, this is, I thought, was clarifying questions, and I, and I recognize that you, you've made some pretty strong arguments in favor of your position here um, once we got through the clarifying questions, and I don't know if you're, going to, if you're not going to skip to the arguments related to five and six. I, I still had a couple of uh, points I wanted to on one rebut related to the the, the stuff. <clears throat> Not so much rebut because I, I too have I'm trying to balance this. I believe that regional planning is important, but I also believe that a strongly held sense of self determination for our community, uh, strongly held, and we defined it as two thirds, but it could have been three quarters or whatever. Um, I, I'm not sure how else you would describe it, but I'm interested in in, in anyone's suggestion in that regard. At the same time, balancing it against, I don't want the creep of moving land uses away as we had over the last, I mean, we know that in Burnaby and in Vancouver and in, and in Richmond for that matter, there, uh, we lost a lot of uh, industrial land. Quitlam has redesignated some of its industrial land in this version. Oh, no, Richmond. Okay. okay, well, I, I'm sorry, I, I, won't, I won't refer to the map though then, but in any case. Um, we've lost some of the industrial land that has traditionally been in, the, in communities like Burnaby and Vancouver. Um, and in this version of the map, we now have, um, in many communities, the industrial land isn't there anymore. It's now designated something else, and that's the choice of a local community. Now, um, those communities that are already well built out um, perhaps are more refined in their land use decisions and more strategic in the future that they have intend to apply to a particular land use. And there are many communities where they're just evolving, and these are communities up the valley, where they perhaps are looking for more flexibility in the future because they haven't made the decisions necessary that necessarily that will apply to their community for the next uh, 100 years. So the, this, the, I'm not sure this is the right one. And uh, I've got reservations about it myself, so I, I'm not sure it's the right mechanism, but I, I want to find a mechanism that allows uh, a measure of self-determination for a portion of, of, of a community's land that um, when we made the decision, here I am trying to protect industrial land, and I voted in favor of Fraser Mills because it was the ability to reconnect our historic Francophone community to the river. Um, the only way to do that was to balance the decision that we wanted to protect all of our industrial land with the thought that we needed to reconnect this. And so I, I want to draw the line now and say that's all we need. But that does achieve that solid municipal goal, and I think a, a laudable municipal goal, um, a, laud a laudable community goal uh, to connect itself back to the river with the other goals, which is to protect the industrial lands that remain now that we've lost so much in Vancouver and in Burnaby. So um, how do you balance that? And it's. Uh, and so we're, we're just trying to figure out, is there another mechanism that will balance that right of self-determination, that ability to self-determine uh, for a community? And I think you're saying that the checks and balances are built in both in terms of um, large scaleness, which has been defined, and there's some criteria here, as well as arbitration. And if those checks and balances don't go far enough, and there's real, at least I, I'm sensing maybe I'm going too far, some, some discomfort with lowering a threshold uh, to one third, uh, maybe even illegal, some, some would say, how do you get, how do you get around that uh, challenge? And also the challenge of having 15 minutes left today. Yeah, I think. That was good. I'd, I'd, I'd suggest, uh, Mr. Chair, that, that uh, we, we, we stop this questioning process at this point in time, and we'll start again at the next point, unless, unless, there's a, unless the group is wanting to go on beyond 5 o'clock. I'm quite happy to, to continue the process myself, but, but that, that's the decision that the, the group should make. I'm, I'm not here to do that. Your air conditioning is killing me. <laughs>
So what do people want to do with the remaining 15 minutes? This is very much uh, focused in uh, towards proposal number one and clarified what's being asked or what's required, some definition of large scale, some good history and policy um, reminding. Um, again, not sh sure what you want to do with the last. Yeah. I would like to call it a day, maybe because the air conditioning is killing me, but more importantly than that, um, I think this was a good discussion. I think what you had to say was good to hear. I, I like to hear the two of you debate because what it does, <laughs> well, what it does for me is it, it, it gives me a basis for reviewing what I'm thinking, whether I'm still positively where I am and not movable, or whether I can see that there might be other solutions. And I think that's a very important part of this. And um, I think today has been wonderful. We're almost nose to nose, not quite, but I think it's um, it, it's been a good session. So, But the unfortunate part is I don't think there are any more uh, meetings scheduled. No, there aren't. Aren't we scheduled for Monday morning? I can't do Monday morning. We've got I, council Mondays. Well, so do we. I, oh. All day Monday? Mine was 14 hours on Monday, so. I was under the impression that these two dates were the only ones that were set, and we would we would return to looking at further dates if there was a desire, a joint desire to, to continue to, to work towards further discussions and, and progress. Uh, it's easy for me to say, and it's self-serving, but not really, because I've got plenty of other work to do. Um, I think there's value in getting together again. Um, I think this tradition of discussion, I appreciate some people wanted to move faster and, and maybe just go to take it or leave it, but I think you made some, I think you made some headway. Um, and I think there's a lot to consider, and there might be not a letter writing campaign going on, but certain questions that might be pre-prepared in anticipation of answering when they come back. It's never as good as, as dialogue. So I don't know what the consensus of the group is, and I think you have one outcome today with respect to performance measures. Uh, which I'm not saying you agreed that you will put them here or there, but there was, I think, an agreement to explore the possibility of integrating some of those performance expectations, call them that for now, into existing policies or budgetary considerations or other mechanisms. Am I right on that? Uh, con to consider that? The thought. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Or, so I think. Or at least laying out how they currently are satisfied to the extent that they are and how they could be satisfied better um, if that uh, remains a concern after that's okay. laid out. So there's some concreteness there and there's maybe some further work to do. So what do people, uh, how, how do you want to bring this to a close? I, I, I don't know if it's a show of, I hope it's not a show of hands about who wants to meet again. Could we set another date? Well, I, I, in, in all fairness, I think by, by law we're sort of stuck having to meet again until we resolve this. Um, so I'm per perfectly fine with the, uh, the, the agreement of the group that we're going to work out some more, some more meeting times. Uh, this is uh, perhaps taking longer, but nonetheless, it's good discussion, and I'm, I'm great with two, three more. Let's keep getting more meeting dates scheduled. I think July will be more relaxed than uh, June has been. And June has been crazy. Um, and I'm hopeful that we can find some dates. Okay, so we're, I, I don't know if we should, cam we should probably, th uh, whoever was handling calendars for this, and that's always the biggest challenge, but sorry, Malcolm, were you going to? Uh, well, I, I think the minister has told us to finish this by the 30th. Well, the, the direction is that um, wants a progress update by the end of this month, and if the parties believe that further meetings are going to be helpful, there's full opportunity to continue uh, that going. I've got a, the letter here I could quote from, but I, I've heard that direction from the ministry in a recent email as well as correspondence we received. So there isn't a drop dead date on this, but there is a progress update uh, that suggests yes, there's worthwhile, there's worthwhileness uh, continuing, and uh, the parties are deciding to meet on a couple of other dates. But anybody's welcome to confirm that independently through the province. But I've, I've certainly got documentation to that effect and got an email. That's, that's, our, that's our understanding. So I don't know if people want to, maybe it's not to make the decision right here and now, but I, I want to uh, conclude with the notion that we're going to at least explore a possibility. You, you haven't gotten, I think you're going to get, I think you're going to make more progress. Uh, and I appreciate some people would have rather uh, gotten this done sooner rather than later. Um, but it's really up to you collectively. Jim? Uh, I um, don't mind the question that, but hopefully we, we can get on with uh, to some of the solutions too. But in, um, maybe if there's a, a commitment to try to schedule two more meetings at some point going out. Uh, I know initially we were trying to line up a number of meetings and that just didn't work, you know, bumping into FCM. Um, you know, I think the staff needs some 
commitment round table to go away, try to schedule, that I would think act or realistically at least two more meetings. I think we're making some progress, but we're probably not quite there yet. So and Johnny has more to more to ask about, so let's give him time. And the other member of the municipalities might probably want to speak as well. So well, can, can we can we accept that as direction to try to work with okay, our I, respective I mean, staff? I have to see something here. We have an entire group of people here every time. We have a lot of other things to do. Do you know how hard it was to get two meetings yeah, together? Sir. No. Yep, Metro Tough for us. Okay, so, uh, you know, there, there, I, we don't have an indefinite date here. Let us try and conclude this. Uh, I know we don't do it by way of motions, and therefore we don't really come to a conclusion. We just go round and round and round and round, and I've seen a lot of committees do that, and then you never get to the end. Uh, and I'm not sure that we will with this either. But I do have to say on behalf of the board and the committees, this is not going on forever. We are going to try and finish this as soon as possible. I said this to Richard when we first started this, oh, way back when, time is of the essence. And I'm not making a career out of these meetings, and I don't think anybody else is. So let us get down to brass tacks. If we're going to do this, let us get it done in two meetings, if we can get two more meetings together. Summer schedule is on. People in this room that usually are here work very, very hard, and they need some time off, and there's a lot of holiday schedules. So, you know, uh, let's uh, fish or cut bait here. You know, so if, if Johnny says we need two more meetings, uh, because you're the questioner here, and if it's going to be useful, well, let's do it. If not, well, you know, I guess we'll do something else. But um, we've had two meetings now. We've probably had three hours of, well, I don't want to say non-productive. Well, you, you feel free to I, I have a very but, different uh, view of what you've accomplished, uh, and uh, very uh, different view of, here every week. I don't, and I know how hard and how long you've worked. Okay. And I, I'd love I, you guys to reach say, consensus yeah. in the next eight minutes. Um, but I thought this would have taken way longer. I think, anyhow, um, I think Jim wanted to say something. Uh, Malcolm wanted to say, sorry, Richard wanted to say something. There's three or four people. Um, and if we can get a couple more meeting dates together, wonderful. If not, I don't know where you go from here. Five. So, so let's understand. The, 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 fir the first hour yeah. was ours. We took the first hour to... Uh, Listen, to, who to, cares? Just... Talk about where we're going. I didn't interrupt you. Once. No, guys, come on. Let's let's try to end on a on a positive, respectful note. Okay. What about? Sorry, Richard. The first hour was ours. After that, it was been questions from Metro and I, and we've been trying to understand them, grasp them, and then answer them as well as we can. If I know they're all written down. If you submitted the questions to us, we could perhaps speed this process up rather than going through the, the lengthy cross-examination that I've been in. I used to be an expert witness, and I'd sit there, and for four hours a day, for days on end, we'd have the cross-examination because that's how it works. This, this is a conflict resolution process that doesn't necessarily have to happen that way. It could happen with you submitting your questions, and we'll be able to resolve a whole bunch of them, I suspect, ahead of the next meeting so that the next meeting is about trying to find solutions rather than trying to clarify the questions you might have. That, I don't know whether that's, if your, your goal with the questions is to get the answers or, to, um, or some other goal, but if it's to get the answers, submit us the questions. You've got them written down. At the same time, um, let, let's not, uh, Coquitlam is, is at the ready to try, try to start talking about the solutions, to, to try to get to the next point where we're actually going to come up with something that resolves these. So far, it's been clarifying questions. I'm not opposed to that, but there's got to be a better way than doing it the way we've been doing it. Um, I'm more passionate about that than you are, I suspect, because um, there's some reason why you're, you're going to do all the questions verbally rather than in writing. Um. Bruce, did you want to add to that? Uh, similar know. offer. I, I would just uh, respect that as we get together, it's been difficult um, outside of this forum to come to common agreements on, on your role. Appreciate you stepping up as it was a change for you today. Uh, but also, uh, there are other participant municipalities and how, how that eventually gets worked in. I, I think, respectfully, we have to come back with some ideas of that early in our next meeting. Yeah, there, there wasn't an opportunity. Selena was quick to point out that we need to provide that time. And I know some people are impatient. Uh, not impatient. You've worked a long time, but, but impatient to get to the substance if there's substance to be resolved and a desire to do that. So there might be some process tweaks you can do between now and maybe next meetings. But in terms of everybody walking away, how are we leaving things? That we'll canvas further meeting dates and see if people are available for those. Uh, a couple of dates in the next, I don't know, while. I'm being appropriately vague. But people are saying end of next week. I mean, well, and, and you might proceed without a facilitator if, if that's the case, because I certainly can't be available just like that. Um, so if there is a drop-dead date and people say you must meet before then, uh, I guess you're going to have to agree on that. 
or if not, you'll go into other places. Uh, Jamie, if, if we we had a we had a process to pick these two dates, mm -hmm. why don't we just tomorrow the, the the two parties that were picking the dates, canvassing the dates, that he charged with trying to get two more dates as soon as possible? Uh, you've heard enough, and you can give your update to the minister if June thirtieth comes. Does that work? People pre prepared to proceed on that basis. That's the hope. Oh, I, des I desperately hope so. And I think everybody would, provided there's appetite, do the best they can to accommodate that, including myself, if, if you invite me back. Um, <coughs> is that the way we're going to draw this to a close? I have no idea. Can I say that? Yes. Thanks, Malcolm. Well, Go ahead. First of all, what time is your council meeting on Monday? Oh, good Lord. I start. Part of the council meeting is at Mine's at 11. Okay, well, uh, I, I'm suggesting, I mean, we've got to be through this thing by the end of the month. And uh, I would suggest that we should try, if possible, to be there uh, in meetings next week. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, in terms of the questions, uh, you may want them in writing, but the fact is that uh, it's just not that simple. So uh, you'll just have to accept that. Um, the third... Why? Why? Well, I think people want to expedite process, and I think there's some, that I, I'm going to just interpret that reaction to be challenged with the unilateralism of that. Is that going too far? And we don't need to, we don't need to have a great, you guys might want to go step outside and talk about how you, how you interact with each other. You're going to ask the question thing, we're going to get answers, and we're going to spend the same amount of time clarifying those answers as if we just asked the questions. So, uh, I, I'm not sure that I think that's productive. The well, other could, thing, then perhaps if could I suggest if we had the answers in advance, if the questions in advance, we could prepare enough documentation so that our answers are more succinct and better value, more valuable. You had, uh, I mean, I realize there's some measure, there, there may be perceived some measure of advantage in the surprise question or the uh, ambush question, and I don't know well, that's part of it. But uh, in the end, if it isn't, just give us the questions in advance or at least the the topics and we'll and then we can prepare the documentation we didn't realize that there was two or three issues that were raised today that i didn't realize those were even in in doubt so i i would i think it would be productive uh, finally um i, I realized that, yeah, first of all, that Ma malcolm said that this has to be done by the end of the month that's a date that was given to the us by the minister back in april back in april it took us two and a half months to start this process, um, not because of Coquitlam's delays. We didn't have any. We were ready to start right away. In fact, our, our emotion in this room was an eight-week process starting in April, um, not an eight-week, not a ten-week process starting ten weeks from now. And so I, I, I take a little bit of issue with the idea that we're being and we're, we're not delaying anything. We're trying to get this through. Unfortunately, we have. Times available in May, we, we booked off available slots to do this conflict resolution in so May. Did we. So did we. We so all did. did. Oh, we great. Well, then I don't know why you couldn't agree to the process. Okay, I don't know if, if re recovering that ground is going to be helpful at this point, at, at Secondly, two minutes to five. Secondly, I, I never said... I never said who was available or who wasn't, so that's your, you know, that's you talking as to who is available, what, and who is delaying this process, or if there's a suggestion that you're delaying or mm. not this process. <clears throat> now, the other thing is, I suggest we meet here. This room is, to me, is 100% better. It's just, it's totally equipped for what we're doing here. Uh, it's not like playing hockey where home field advantage is of, of Don't means spring anything. Hockey. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> you might get a riot. Yeah, true, true. Just that's the people in the room. But um, no, I suggest we meet here. It, it just makes sense for every reason. Uh, here or something like it. It's uh, it. It has to be, I think, close knit and close together and eye to eye. And I'm, I'm not going to advocate here or there because I would be making a decision. But I think it, the atmosphere and the closeness and proximity of people should be in a setup very much like this. And if everybody's agreeable to this location, uh, without imagining somebody gets advantage because of that, wonderful. So um, I think, You've Johnny, you were just just a couple. Home ice is no advantage. We figured yeah. that one out. Just a, just a couple of points, Mr. Chair. Um, no, number one, I've, I'm, my questions are working from about three different sources. 
Okay. Um, I'm not asking questions off a list. Uh, I, I'm working through where, depending on what Jim answers and what their thing is. And I, and I find it, I personally find it useful, and I'm hoping the people across the table find it useful that we work through those questions and answers to increase our mutual understanding. That was the point. I think I it's useful, but it will take time. I That's the challenge. I, I'm hoping it won't take as much time. I will undertake to meet with Mr. McIntyre to, to indicate the areas that I want to explore with him. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's not a list of questions that we're talking about, but, but um, and again, as we move on to the specific, the other remaining proposals, I don't think we need to go into as, as lengthy a detail. I thought objective one in the background and the different perceptions on the legislation was really important because that goes to the heart of, of, of what I understand uh, at least some of you have concerns about. I'll uh, obviously have to deal with the uh, consistency and the definition part, uh, but I think we can. I think we're almost to what we should be doing. Now. Okay. And when we have a, yeah. a meeting in the afternoon, why don't we go to six? Yeah. Why do we have to go. stop at five? No, I mean, oh, in the future. Yeah, in the future. Because I work for a living, and when I put well, off so this I. afternoon, I do tonight. Well, <laughs> well when we canvas calendars, let's canvas times. But again, I think when we canvass dates, we should canvass as much time, hours during that day as possible. And that's my suggestion, as many, and if they're concurrent, if they can be one day and then the next day, even better to keep that momentum going. So we will endeavor to uh, explore those dates sooner rather than later next week, if not the week after, um, and a location like this, if not this one. Um, some discussions will happen between then and now to, to create the themes that will be further discussed. And uh, we hope that people can get together sooner rather than later. So thank you, everybody. Um, See you soon, I hope.